to go in New Orleans on October 26, 1922. Holy Cross and Jesuit met on the football field for the very first time. And in spite of wars, hurricanes, devastation, pandemics, and through changes in culture and lifestyle, this football game between the Blue Jays and the Tigers has continued. Tonight, on the centennial anniversary celebration of this football series, it has now grown into the rivalry. We get set for the 103rd meeting of Holy Cross and Everybody, get birth a lot alongside Wade Kaiser, the Holy Cross and Judgment broadcast team here. Having some fun with this one. And Wade, you know what this rivalry is. You played in it and you coached in it. Yes, I did. It was a great honor to do both. And uh, it is a rivalry. And one of the things I say every year. It's a great evening for football, and everybody's going to enjoy this football game, this rivalry game tonight. Two teams, both 2-6, 0-5 and six, oh and five in district play, but there's a lot of riding on the line because the winner of this game, hey, after next week's season, regular season finale. Well, you know, well after next week. Correct. And, and let me say this, all right? Having been there... Everybody talks about the rivalry. Everybody talks about the playoffs. These two guys are in a position right now. They're, you know, they only have two wins, and they're only aren't worried about a rivalry. Yes, they're not worried about a playoff game. They're worried about a win. I liken this to a wounded animal that's kind of cornered. They're going to come out fighting. Two heavyweight fighters in the middle of the seventh round that are bloodied and bruised. They're going to come out fighting, right? And that's what both of these football teams are going to do tonight because they both are in desperate need of a win. They've got to get a win on their record, and they've got to get to a third win. And we talked with uh, Nick Sullivan Camacho and uh, uh, Coach Ryan Manali from Jesuit, and, you know, that's what's on their mind, how their teams are going to play, how hard they're going to play, and are they going to play to the point where they're going to come out with a win tonight. That's number one on their mind. Jesuit leads the series 60 to 40 and 1. So that's 101 games. And uh, of course, there was one no contest in 1937. And then these two teams have twice met twice in a season. So here we are at the 103rd game. And uh, Jesuit has won the last four in a row. And there have been a number of streaks. As a matter of fact, Jesuit won the first eight, 11 of the first 12, if you want to go all the way back to the first 12 games played. But since then, there have been six different five-game win streaks, but none longer than five games. And right now, Jesuit can win a fifth in a row if they win tonight. Yeah, five seems to be the number. I was uh, fortunate enough to be involved in one of those five-game uh, win streaks. And, um, yeah, it, you know, five seems to be the number. It kind of is what's rolling out there. Now the Holy Cross Tigers just came out on the field. Here comes the Jesuit Blue Jays. They are behind the barrier to break with the big blue J on it. The crowd still filing into this stadium. Here come the Blue Jays. Since early this morning, there has been tailgating going on. Really picked up in the afternoon. There have been parades. There have been recognition of former and current players. You'll see some during the course of this broadcast tonight. Recognition about standing alone. This has been more than just a rivalry in a football game. It has turned into a monstrosity celebration. It's more than that. Sidelines, just with the whole team wearing the whole blue colors all across. The visiting team are now getting set for the invocation.
Jazz with Milano, Joseph and Calico, class of 1963, a graduate of the United States Coast Guard Academy. He served in Vietnam and earned a purple heart in the bronze star in his service. He worked in California, Bay St. Louis, and New Orleans before being honorably disappointed in 1988. He too passed away earlier this year. The brothers of each of the honorees tonight, Steve Lightell. For David Lightell, he is honored in Robert Angelico. For Joseph Angelico, class of 63, are accepting on behalf of their brothers.
a lot of those zone read plays and RPOs and things like that, but he's going to be running into a pretty good Jesuit front right there. Braden Helm, senior, six foot, 186 pound defensive end, made a great play. He's one of the Helm boys that has been playing for the past maybe 8, 10, 12 years at Jesuit. I had the opportunity to coach a couple of them. Yeah, the grandfather went to Holy Cross, but a lot of the young sisters went to Jesuit and still go to Jesuit and Holy Cross fighting for the first down, fighting, 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 trying to get the extra yardage. Up from his linebacker position to make that play was Wyatt Meyer. You know, Jesuit this year defensively has kind of, you know, struggled in a lot of areas there. Uh, had some injuries. They've had to move some people around, that sort of thing. But, you know, they're... Uh, they're a solid unit, and, and they're going to be formidable tonight, obviously, for Holy Cross. Take a look at the Holy Cross starting lineup right after this play offensively. And uh, they do get the first down, and that's exactly what they had to do. Move the chains, nothing fancy, short yardage, and they got it. And they're just doing nothing fancy. Kobe Young, look at our Holy Cross offensive starters brought to you by Lamarck Ford. Well, good-looking group right there, especially Kobe Young. We've just seen him. He can play wide receiver. He can play quarterback. He is one of the best athletes on the field. Really solid group of wide receivers there and a nice offensive line. He slips, gains his balance, and look at Kobe Young just on the recovery. He is close to the first down, will go down at the 40-yard line and be just about a yard short. Look, there's the RPO again. He's reading the last guy on the line of scrimmage for Jesuit. They slanted to their boundary, to their side of the field, and he was reading the last man, the defensive end, number 92, Hunter Ufnak. Hunter Ufnak rides all the way down. What does he do? Kobe Young pulls that ball and replaces that defensive end for a nice pickup. If you're familiar with Holy Cross from early in the year, you're going, well, who is this quarterback and where is uh, Cole Canatella? Cole Canatella was injured uh, two weeks ago against Brother Martin, and he probably is out for the year with a separated shoulder. Pretty tough as the Tigers getting it done right now on the ground. Nothing fancy, just running the football. That time, Kieran Smith. Kieran Smith comes in, 21 carries, 88 yards, three TDs on the season. He's a solid young man. He's only a freshman. Well, that reminds me of another Smith that played in this series a long time ago. Here's your Jesuit defense brought to you by Lamarck Ford. A couple of solid players there. We've already mentioned Braden Helm and Hunter Ufnak already. They anchor that defensive line for the Jays. That time, Kobe Young, nowhere to go on the right side, brings up second and 11 as he stopped for a one-yard loss. Well, I think you can picture, Ken, what, what Holy Cross wants to do when they have Kobe Young out there at quarterback. They're going to they're gonna establish the run. They're going to make sure he's going to get the majority of the carries somehow, some way. And every now and then, obviously, he's going to hand off to one of his other running backs. But they want to try to establish Kobe Young as some sort of threat. We got yeah. a timeout. Yeah, it's a timeout early. But it will be, as you just said, the Kobe Young and the Kieran Smith, uh, Kieran Smith, I can tell you it's going to be their show for just about the entire night. Tonight's coverage on Crescent City Sports is brought to you by the Lamarck Motor Company in Kenner. Lamarck Ford, the number one Ford dealer in the metro New Orleans market. Uh, there must be a reason. I like their popcorn. Yeah, they got some good popcorn over there. De <laughs> Dennis is the guy that actually pops it. Really? Don't, don't tell him I told you that, though. Really? Well, when, when he actually gets up to yeah, then that's okay, another story. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Next time I'm in there, I'm going to say hi to Dennis because he does a great job with that popcorn. <laughs> well, we have not seen and probably don't expect to see a lot of throwing of the football right now. What I think Salta Famaggio is trying to do is avoid what he was most afraid of not being able to move the football early and having to punt and give away a short field. But right now, Holy Cross is proving that they can move the football on the ground. Just give it to Kobe Young, get great offensive line blocking. And Young has a first down as he's up at midfield and just great blocking by the offensive line of Colin Wenzel, Andrew Hewitt, Seth Doran, Brady Landrew, and Albert Pamela. Great replay. Look, everybody reaching to their left, and it's quarterback sweep, lead sweep with a blocker out in front of them, and nothing much to the idea. He's trying to get out on the perimeter, does a nice job running the ball, has a nice pickup, and it sets up a nice, uh, nice third down for him. Interesting thing on there, and here we go. Right up the middle, just pushing forward, and that, again, is Kieran Smith. And it's going to bring up fourth down and short. This is going to be decision time now for yep. – for 
the Holy Cross Tigers. Here's a good look at it again on the replay. Oops, didn't get our replay there, but it was an inside zone uh, package in which Kieran Smith rammed it up inside, reading the first down lineman past the center, and he cuts it back against the grain and has a nice pickup, and it looks like Holy Cross has made their decision. Well, Holy Cross's kicking game has been a little suspect, according to Coach, so they're going to go for it, and they get it. Gamble pays off for Holy Cross and Salter for Maggio as Colby Young, looking to go right, turns, goes left instead, and picks up and up for the first down down to the 38-yard line of the Blue Jays. We get a good chance to look at the replay. You're going to see the guard and the tackle are going to pull opposite of the read, right? So everybody's following the guard and tackle. What does Kobe Young do? He takes that ball out of the disconnect right there, finds a soft spot, gets upfield, and has a nice first down. They're moving the ball well right now on this Jesuit defensive front. And they're doing it without Cole Canatella. They missed him last week against Carr. And what a nice step inside by Kobe Young. And look at Kobe Young scoot to the far side for another first down. Just saw that play go the other way to their left. Two plays prior. Now they run, turn around and run it again to their right for a nice pickup to move the chains for a first down. They want to move the chains and stay in rhythm. They want to stay between the chains. Here's a good look at the quarterback sweep. Look at the block out there. Nice block, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. That was Kieran Smith, the freshman running back, making a nice block on the edge against the support. Yeah, freshman running back. There you go. And Smith, after the nice block, gets a chance to do something with the football himself and just pushes behind his offensive line straight ahead. He's inside the 25-yard line. He needed to keep bringing that back against the grain. It opened up. If he would have bent it all the way back to the B-gap, he kind of stayed in the hole a little too long. Look at the hole backside right there. That's where he should have made his cut, but he made the cut into the A-gap to pick up the yardage he did. That's a young freshman, just didn't see the backside cut off the inside zone. Talk about a long, sustained drive. Six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and this is the, the Tigers driving off the opening kickoff, and they push down to the 20-yard line, and now they're facing third down. And short. Well, you know, a lot of people say the best defense is a good offense, right? So you hold the ball, you run clock, you keep their offense sitting on the bench. And this is exactly what the doctors ordered for the Holy Cross Tigers. If you talk to Nick Salta from Aju, he couldn't have, you know, pictured a better first drive, and it's happening. The secret is to come away with points. On the edge of the red zone of the Jesuit Blue Jays at the 20, this is the 13th play of the drive. And the Tigers are close, but I think short just a little bit of the first down. So it's going to be looking at fourth and maybe a little bit less than one. Let's see where the official spot goes. Tyler Otan in on that tackle for the Jesuit Blue Jays. Fine linebacker, senior. He, Dominic Lojudis, number one, are going to be the guys that are going to see around the ball the majority of the night for the Blue Jays. That's their tackle leaders. Those are the guys that are the heart and soul of the leaders they, of the first down unit. And there's your first down call. They looked there at it. That's right. They didn't have to bring the chains out or anything. They looked at it. First down, and it is. So the officials just said, move the chains, and the Tigers have a new set of downs. Hand off to Kieran Smith. He's got a hole, and he slides right through it. He is near the 10-yard line, and he was quick to hit it that time. A little burst of quickness by Keyron Smith. Oh, one cut-and-go runner, right downhill. That's what you want to do when you're running in between the tackles. You don't have time to dance around back there. You make that one cut, you press the hole, and then you get your shoulder pads north and south, and that's exactly what Kieran Smith did. I could see why Nick Salto was so high on this young freshman. 15th play of this drive. Everyone has been a run. Holy Cross has not thrown a pass yet. And here is Kobe Young on the keeper, and he's pushing down inside the 10, very close to a first down. Here's another good look. There's your quarterback sweep again. Look how the offensive linemen take those outside zone steps. They're aiming for the outside shoulder and armpit of their, their, their landmark. They're trying to get up and on it and create some sort of push either back or vertically along that line of scrimmage right there. They created a vertical push, a nice little hole for Kobe Young. First and goal. And that time the Blue Jays were waiting for it on the right side, and they stuffed it, closed it, and it was shut down very quickly by Wyatt Meyer. 
Wyatt Meyer was there. Also, Hunter Ufnack came down the line of scrimmage. He followed the pullers on the counter play. Got right in the hip pocket of the tackle. There's your counter play. Bang, right there. 92. Meyer also was there. 15. Those guys sniffed that thing out real quick. Good look at Ufnack right there. A senior, 5'11", 225 pound, pretty darn good baseball player too. Second to go from the eighth this time, Young trying to go to the right side, nowhere to go, and the Blue Jays have uh, found a way to just shut down those creases and those lanes, and the Tigers are now facing third and goal, and they have run two plays that have lost yardage, and the ball is back to the nine-yard line. You know, the Tigers can have, have struggled inside the red zone all year long. That was one of the things Nick Saltafamashu told me as we talked to him this week was one of the, his beans of existence, I guess you would say, <laughs> is that he can't get the ball in the end zone when he's inside the red zone. Let's see what they do here. Young with Kieran Smith on the side of him. Oh, a little flip, a little razzle-dazzle. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Finn Martin. Finn Martin comes in for the little flip that's going to be a, a pass completion, the only pass, and it wasn't the kind you would expect, but it worked for the Tigers, and they have eaten up most of the first quarter on a long drive and gotten points on the board. Finn Martin takes a little toss pass, like he said, because if the ball goes on the ground, it's incomplete. He comes in with two touchdowns on the year. He finds a soft spot in that Jesuit defense and sticks his nose in there, gets into the end zone, and now he has three touchdowns on the year. 18 plays. They go 80 yards in 18 plays and took 8 minutes and 56 seconds off the clock. My goodness. Well, here's the replay of the PAT, and it looks like he hooked it right. My goodness gracious, had a little pressure off his left side, and that, somebody got a hand on it. They yeah, it looks tip, like they yeah, tipped it. Yeah, watch, watch close. Let's see if we can see that, that again. Yeah, as we're looking down from this angle, you look at the right side of the line. Well, it looks like possibly they got a hand on it, like you said, and then it pushed it off to the right. Let's see right here. Off to the Holy Cross, left. Yeah, there it is, go. off the edge. Looks like, oh, yeah, he got a hand on it. He knocked it down. Didn't get a number on that. More than a number, he blocked it. Right. All right, we'll take a break. Holy Cross leads it 6 nothing. So that. And the Tigers kick it off. Short one taken at the 10, breaking a tackle or two. And out to the 30-yard line. Blue Jays return. And let's take a look at the, that was Jake Jardina, Jesuit offense brought to you by Lamarck Ford. The guy we're going to. It's going to run this offense all night long is be Bo Perez. You know, he, he's been kind of hot and cold so far this year. He's going to have to get on target tonight if they want to come out on top. Watch this offensive line. Very physical, very strong. They love to run the ball down here. They love to play smash mouth football up front. Well, Bo Perez, as you said, he'll throw on first down and tosses it out to the right side. It is caught by number seven, Carbello. He's also your place kicker. I had to check that again, and he that's not his first catch this year. And Corbello out there getting a little hands on the football with the catch, not only kicks the football, but catching the football there, too, on the little flare screen pass out to the perimeter. A little no huddle check with me by the Blue Jays to try to get into tempo. I'd like to see that with Corbello. He's a senior playing in this game for the last time, so why not take advantage of it? Perez looking again. This time he'll toss it to Jace Larson. Larson has enough for the first down, and he's brought down. So while Holy Cross kept it, totally on the ground for 18 plays. The Blue Jays come out and boom, they throw on their first two opportunities with the football and they've got it up to the 48-yard line of the Blue Jays. Jace Larson comes in with 453 yards. He's the wide receiver that gives them their huge vertical threat. This time a handoff right up the middle. Tigers waiting for it and they Shut it down quickly. 
It was stopped by Jordan Johnson, the outside linebacker for Holy Cross. He came right down the line against the counterplay and banged it up in the backfield. Bo Perez impressive. The Holy Cross defense brought to you by Lamarck Ford. Look at Ian Tate. He's had a great season. Number zero right there. He's definitely a solid defensive end for that Holy Cross defense. Perez on the play action. Will throw to the left side. Had a man wide open. Just overthrew him. That's my point. I said that as he was coming on the field. He's been hot and cold, right? And and, and, and you talk to Ryan Manali. They just can't get the consistency they want out of Bo Perez, this junior. So Wide open receiver right there. Even though it's to the wide side of the field, he should have hit him right between the numbers. He sails it out of bounds. And now it's going to bring up a third and long. These are the situations that you want to try to stay out of offensively because those are the hard calls on that call sheet. Those third and eights, third and nines. And you're looking at the third and nine, as you just mentioned. Perez waiting for the snap. He's being chased. He'll toss it high as the pressure was on and just overthrew Jasper Parker. Had nowhere to go. Jasper Parker was kind of swinging out of the backfield. Looking downfield, Bo Perez had everything covered by a white jersey. He Lance Williams. The right. He jumps it out there to Jasper Parker. Almost a lateral, but it wasn't. It was forward. Ooh, my goodness. That could have been a lateral. Ball goes out of bounds, though. Well, punter William Hudlow comes onto the field, one of the top punters in the league this year. Yeah, Tulane two two commit, if I'm not mistaken. Tulane two, two commit, worked with his mom and dad. His mom worked in the Tulane Athletics Department with me for many, many years and uh, very proud of the kind of year he's having, averaging 43 on straightaway punts when he's not doing the rugby-style punt and gets a pretty good one here, 38 yards, and... Uh, Backs up the Holy Cross Tigers as we get down to the final minute, two seconds of this first quarter. Well, I, you know, if you talk to Nick Salter from Aju, he, he couldn't have written up a script any better than this, right? He, so was he, a, take, right, yeah. he takes it the length of the field, sticks it in the end zone, comes away with points, right? Comes out and, and does a pretty good job handling Bo Perez in this Jesuit offense. And now he's got the ball again, ready to run the clock out of the first quarter with his, a 6 with a six nothing lead. His biggest fear was without his starting quarterback that he might not be able to move the football and have to punt early and give Jesuit a short field. And everything worked just the opposite of that. They came out with a great game plan, ran it, ate the clock, only threw the ball on the touchdown pass, and that was just a little a little shove forward, one of the little shovel passes like. Wasn't even what you'd expect to be as throw and did it all on the ground and had success with it. Let's see if they can follow that up in these final 40 seconds of the first quarter. Not much on first down. Second down, nine. Kobe Young, they normally had him at wide receiver, but he is their best athlete, so he's been playing a, a little Wildcat last week and then a lot this week and, and against Carr just to get him ready for the position. And they go forward again, Kieran Smith. Well, Kieran Smith makes a great cut right there. He, he Wow, I tell you what, you know, it, 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 Coach Saltafamasha was telling me this week that he really likes this freshman, right? He has great vision, and he's only going to get bigger and stronger, and he proved it right there. He, again, running in between the tackles, sees the backside cut, and makes a really, really nice cut. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Holy Cross 6, Jesuit nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter of play in the rivalry right after this.
up yet because I don't want them. Get ready to bring them up, Ken. Acknowledge this to community. And we're back with the second quarter. Right now they are honoring people for the Community Service Award. This goes to the senior football letterman from each team for his exemplary service to his community. For Holy Cross, Jordan Johnson, he has volunteered with Greater Mount Calvary, Forgotten Angels, and most recently with STEM NOLA, where he trained 7- to 12-year-olds in the use of solar energy as a means to power automobiles. For Jesuit, the honoree is Jerron Duplessis, volunteered with Jesuit's Operation Upgrade this past summer, working with at-risk youth in the 5th, 6th, and 7th grades. And at the end of the term, he was named Senior of the Year by a vote of the upgrade participants. And that's a very, very big honor by both of those young men. Congratulations again. Holy Cross, Jordan Johnson, Jesuit's Jerron DePlessis. 6 nothing. Holy Cross at the end of one. And nobody really know what to expect at the end of the one. I think the thing we didn't expect was an 18-play, 80-yard drive with 17 plays on the ground running and, and one play passing. And now Holy Cross again with Kobe Young at quarterback out of the gun. He'll take it around the right side, and he is up to the 26-27 yard line. It's going to be, as we said, the Kobe Young and Kieran Smith show. Well, nice job by Richard Bell coming in from his defensive back position, number 10, to make a nice hit. He fit right off the linebacker coming downhill. Now, that's his job when he's coming from the secondary. He's got to come down to fit run support, playing a too-high secondary, make the linebacker right. He does a nice job. And look at this. There's Smith. Look at that quickness to the hole. Kieran Smith wow. barrels through for a gain of 14 and a first down. Well, credit that offensive line right there, okay? Yep. They come off the ball, okay? they get movement, they create a crease right there, and Kieran Smith looks like he's coming out of a cannon. Hey, Seth Doran playing center 5'11", 303, isn't your usual center. He's an offensive lineman. The starting center was lost last week to another football injury where he's going to have to have some surgery there. Kieran Smith again this time, and he's to the 45, a gain of for four. Well, he comes in with, Kieran Smith, that is, with 21 carries, 88 yards, three touchdowns on the season. He's a workhorse, and he will only excel in that role as he gets bigger, as he gets older and stronger. Started to come into his own, I think, in the St. Aug game where he scored twice, and that was huge. Flag down, and this may be it's delay. It's going to be offsides against Jezzer. We've got in, uh, we've got encroachment into that neutral zone. Look like they got number nine, Tyler Otan, a little bit too anxious. He steps in and he breaks the plane of the football into that neutral zone, and they're going to stop the play automatically. Take a look at your rushing numbers right now. Ten rushes, 51 yards for Kobe Young. Kieran Smith, 11 for 48. These two guys really getting the job done well, for the they're, Holy they're, Cross Tigers. They're your workhorses tonight, and that's part of the game plan. They were going to ride and die with those guys, and that's what Nick Saltermajou said. But, hey, credit a lot to that offensive line so far. And you've got three wideouts. Would he throw this time? Kieran Smith bobbles the handoff, but somehow manages to cover that ball, goes forward, and gets across the 50 down to the 49-yard line. That'll be very close. To a first down. Jesuit trying yeah, they marked that he's got it. First down. Jesuit trying to uh, push the issue here. So they they run a little run blitz right there with Dominic Lojudis blitzing through the C gap, but they run the other way. You know, a lot of times you blitz and you're also guessing where they're going to run. Would they dare throw the ball? No, they won't. This is Young around the left side. He's hitting, knocked back for a one-yard loss. Nowhere to go that time as the Blue Jay defense smothered him. Look, Kobe Young can do a lot of things, but throwing the ball vertically might not be on his menu, right? So they're going to run this football. They're going to establish him as an athlete running the football. And then if they're going to throw the football, somehow they're going to get someone out there that can throw it out to him on the perimeter. You know what's interesting, and I don't know if we'll see him today because he's supposed to have either a separated shoulder or a shoulder injury, but your starting quarterback, uh, Canatella, 
is is actually dressed out and standing on the sideline. And he did take some warm-up throws. Flag down. They're going over it right now to see what the flag is. Here we go. All right, personal foul. That's going to be a helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, right? So they're going to walk it back 15. That was going to be a spot foul. And now it's going to be first and an Uber ride, right? I mean, A long Uber ride. Yes, long Uber ride. So here we go. A couple of parishes here. Counties, if you're watching, from anywhere outside of Louisiana. Exactly. First and 26, if I'm and not mistaken. And they're going to have to make this up on the ground as Kieran Smith again to the 40. Reminds me, again, as I said earlier, of a young man named Glenn Smith who played on the 1963 team, the state championship team, went on to LSU. He and Harry Nunez were paired in the backfield a few years before that. Harry graduated in 62. Well, Harry they Nunez, were. I was fortunate enough to have Harry Nunez coach me in high school. Great, great, great leader of men, and he was a great football player at Holy Cross in 63. He and Steve Foley are the honorees from former athletes. They are going to throw the ball, and look at Young tossing it out. He's got ten <laughs> wide open. <laughs> My goodness, Finn Martin got behind everybody in the long pass okay. for a touchdown. My goodness, 61 yards All as right. the Tigers throw it long for the first time, only the second pass of this game for Holy Cross. I, I'm going to have to walk back my statement that throwing the ball vertically <laughs> isn't on Kobe Young's menu. I take that back. Kobe Young can throw the ball vertically. That was a beauty. <laughs> yes, it was. Great pass. Finn Martin was behind everybody that was in a blue jersey. Balls out there. Safeties bite hard, thinking it's the sweep, quarterback sweep. And what does he do? He throws it out there. Finn Martin walks into the end zone. High snap. This one blocked again. So the second point after blocked. And, again, that's what one thing Salta Maggio told us. He said, man, the kicking game is, is something we really well, got to work on. That's, 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 it's week nine. That yeah. shouldn't happen. Look, let me, let, me tell you, let me tell you something. You've got to be able to get one point. Here's a good look at it again. And I couldn't tell if it was blocked inside, in between the tight ends or in the tackle. Somewhere in there, you can't have it. You can see he's upset. I would be upset all so week nine, you don't have kicking mistakes like that that cost you two points that could come back and hurt you at the end of the football game. Here's a good look at it again. I don't know if he even got the ball up. It was blocked inside. Didn't get any, uh, any uh, height on the kick. Well, Salt said that our Achilles heel, uh, can, heel is, is Can you tell I'm a kicking. little irritated? That irritates me. You <laughs> I know. As a former head coach, I understand that tonight's coverage on Crescent City Sports is brought to you by Oxner Sports Medicine Institute. Get the same sports medicine care the pros receive with minimally invasive treatments and quicker recovery times. Visit ochsner.org slash sportsmed to learn more or schedule an appointment near you. Tigers feeling it right now. Early, however, in this rivalry. And uh, a deep kick returned back to the 30-yard line. I believe that was number 86 on that return. It was Roman Larry. Yeah, Roman Laird. Larry, that's right. Ninth grader, wide receiver. Throwing some people in there for the rivalry, giving them a little taste of this rivalry action. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how Jesuit answers offensively now. You know, they, they, you know, they, they like to be balanced. They like to be able to throw the ball 50% of the time, run the ball 50% of the time. But, you know, they've got, they've got to make sure they move the sticks now and keep their defense off the field a little bit. And let's see if they do. They're going to run and find a hole and find a, almost a first down, maybe a first down on this one, and that is Jerron DePlessis, the senior. Jerron DePlessis, the senior, like you said. He comes in with 294 yards on the night, 81 carries, one touchdown. You're going to see Jesuit use a lot of running backs. DePlessis again. Worked the first time, doesn't work the second time as he is lassoed by Jordan Johnson. Jordan Johnson comes right down the line of scrimmage from his outside linebacker position, gets underneath the kickout block, and makes a nice play for a loss. Look at the – you see it? Right there. Comes right underneath the, uh, the kickout block, makes a nice play. 
he's a good looking player now. He's uh, 6'2", 197, but I don't think he's 197. He looks like he's maybe about 205, 210 on the hoof when I was down on the field looking at him during warm ups. Duplessis and Parker, second down and nine. Fake this time to Duplessis. And a good toss and catch that time by Jason Thompson for the first down. And he is inside the Tigers 40 or right at the 40 at 18 yard pass completion. Hey, credit Bo Perez. Look at the poise he has here. Eyes downfield. One, two reads. Nothing open. Move the pocket a little bit. Get myself a chance to throw. Find the third read. Third read was Jason Thompson. Very nice job by Bo Perez. Might have been his best offensive play of this game. Look, it's not easy when you have to step into the footsteps of Jack LaRivier, a guy who led Jesuit last year to the state championship game. And that's huge. And uh, he's just got to bide his time, learn it, and get it done. Hand off, get some yardage before Holy Cross is able to shove him back. Not much. Duplessis is stopped by Braden Prince. Braden Prince from his linebacker position. 32 tackles on the season. Steps right in there. Watch Braden Prince step up in there against the ISO. Come under the block. Nice tackle right there. Nice physical tackle. Got his pads on the running back and brings him to the ground. 646 remaining first half action. Good play action of Duplessis. Perez Runs to the right side, throws it up, and a good catch far side by Jace Larson, who got the feet in. That looked like an NFL catch. Look, that's what Jace Larson does well. He can catch the football. I've been watching him now for three years play. He has got a great set of hands. He runs great routes. He knows where he is on the field. He does little things like this. He knows he's right at the boundary. He All he has to do is tap his feet and make sure he gets one in. And he did a great job. And also knowing where the sticks were. Yeah, and he was close. Almost, Very close, he, right. Almost you know, had there. he not had to reach out for it, Wade, he probably gets the first down. Instead, Correct. it's third down one. This is right in the wheelhouse, the there Jesuit offense. They want to be in these third and shorts. Yeah, power blocker. And their timeout called. Blue Jays want a timeout to talk about this one. They had that big power blocker. Just in case they needed him or they could have given Jack Roniger the ball. So with that, we'll take a break at this time out. 6.33 to play in the first half. 12 nothing. Holy Cross in the rivalry game. Flash. Where's flashback? Hold on. i got to find it. Hold on. Hold on. Here it is. I had a mo. Yeah, hold on. There we are. No, clear. I'm clear. Clear the bug. Clear the bug. Put me in. Tonight's flashback is presented by Oshner Sports Medicine Institute. The largest crowd ever to see a game in this series or in the stadium happened on November 1940. When 34,345 packed into a relatively new City Park Stadium as Jesuit defeated Holy Cross 25-7 to for the city championship. They still have posters of the crowd for that game as the Blue Jays take it on the ground and get the first down. So first down, Jesuit at the 25-yard line. And they're getting that sustained drive right now. You said, Wade, that, and it is just so important for the Blue Jays falling behind 12-0. Well, they've got to give their defense a little bit of a rest, right? So they pick up the first down with a quarterback ISO off tackle. They have a Blue Jay down. Looks like one of their offensive linemen, Spencer number Lenosa. 77, Spencer Lagnosa. Tell you what, he, he has been a rock for the past couple of years. They moved him over after his freshman year from the defensive line to the offensive line. He was solid as a freshman on the defensive line, getting a lot of playing time, but they needed some offensive linemen, so they take Spencer and move him over 6'2", 325 pounds to anchor that offensive line, and he's done a nice job. He looks a little gingerly walking on that left ankle, maybe. The Blue Jays have always had a good offensive line. One of the things you took a lot of pride in when you were coaching. <laughs> well, well, the game's won up front, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you've got you've got to, you, the game's played on the defensive and offensive line, and, and you know, 
But hey, sometimes you have to right. find them. You don't always get those players. I know the story of how you found the guy named Corey Dublin. Right. He wasn't even dressed out for football. You found him in eighth grade, and he started for four years yeah, st- on the line for as you. a freshman, yeah. <laughs> Corey Dublin was great. He, had, he, he, he did a little, uh, little time with the uh, Chicago Bears this summer. That's right. He certainly did. Good pass by Perez. And again, it's Jace Larson inside the 10-yard line. And Larson's finding the crease between the defenders. A lot of white jerseys there. 17 yards for the first. Again, Jace Larson with the sure hands out there with the great route. Ball's out on time by Bo Perez. Nicely done. And they'll hand it off to the stalwart running back over the right side on first and goal. And that's uh, Jerron DePlessis. We're going up tempo right now. You get inside that red zone, they're going to really try to tempo it up. Here it comes again. They like to run the same play back to back. And let's see if it's Duplessis. He's number three behind Perez, who will go under center quickly and then quarterback sneak it right through. There's the push. Holy Cross pushing back. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Got to about the foot line. Well, when you go under center and you're, you're always in the gun, there's only two things that are usually coming out, right? It's either sneak. a kneel or a quarterback <laughs> sneak. And they weren't going uh, to kneel. I'm not going to give you any opinions here. <laughs> they weren't, weren't going to kneel. So. Right. So here we go. But it's third down. you got third and goal. Two shots to make it from here without having to settle for a field goal. Perez will keep it, hit, and his forward progress takes him into the end zone. Touchdown. Quarterback ISO right off the right-hand side. They get on the board. Bo Perez puts him in the end zone. Nice drive by the Blue Jays. Took their time with that. And we have seen some clock-eating drives by both Jesuit on their second position and Holy Cross on their first. Aiden Corbella, sure-footed kicker, doesn't miss very much. Anything inside the 30-yard line is usually a pretty sure thing for Corbello. And it's booted up and good. You know, Corbella comes from a kicking family, if I'm not mistaken. His father kicked at LSU. I think he's helping along with Kurt Whirling right now work with those kickers from Jesuit. Here's another look at your touchdown by the Blue Jays. You can see Bo Perez taking it in over the right side with a great lead block by the offensive backs of Jesuit. Ten play, 70-yard drive. Took three minutes and 23 seconds off the clock. Well, they gave a lot of rest to that defense, and that's exactly what they wanted. So it's going to be interesting to see how Holy Cross is going to answer. i got to think Holy Cross is still going to answer with number two, Kobe Young, right? Now now we know he can throw the ball vertically. It is on that menu. <laughs> I, I, well, hey, look, I, if, if I'm going to adjust with defensive backfield, I might have gotten caught off guard because well, I'm yeah, not thinking yeah. they're going to throw the ball long with, with Canatella out of the game. Right, well, he's know, dressed on the sidelines, but we, we don't think he's coming in. Well, I know Dan Devon the fine defensive back coach of, of the Blue Jays who I had the fortune to coach, and he also coached with me when I was there. Uh, he's going to be yelling his safeties that came biting straight down, not taking a look at their reads and their keys, and that allowed, that allowed the receiver to slip behind them for that uh, deep pass. So you got Finn Martin, Smith, and uh, Young deep for Holy Cross as Carbello puts his foot into it. And sends it into the end zone, no return. Well, that's kind of a given. Corbello's going to usually put it halfway out the back of the end zone. That's the type of leg he has. First two drives for the Holy Cross Tigers, which has given them the 12-7 lead. 24 runs, two passes, both for touchdowns. And, of course, one was just a little shovel pass, a little flip to Fenn Martin doing a little... uh, Speed move right across the line. Well, that really ups your stats and your percentage, right? <laughs> it does. <laughs> I mean, yeah. First and 10 at the 20, they'll. Oh, good fake that time to Smith. Young on the keeper, and he's up there for six. That was, my grand, my great grand that was no fumble. Ball was down. Oh, Kobe Young was reading the last guy again on the line of scrimmage, and what ends up happening? Look at the last guy right there. The last guy was Braden Helm. He's blocked and he's kicked out. So that's an easy read and an easy give for Kobe Young to Karen Smith. More than anything, though, that puts him in a very manageable second down situation. 
Yeah, if you can have second and short, that's good. Smith looking for room around the left side. Spins by a lot of tacklers. Goes down, drop the football. Jesuit says they have it. What do the officials say? No call yet. They're coming in to look at it. Is it Blue Jay with that ball wrapped around him? The question is, did the ground cause the fumble? Well, here it is. Great cut on the sweep right there. It looks like it's still going to be Holy Cross football. It is. If I'm not mistaken, that looked like Tyler Otan that stripped the ball uh, for the Jesuit Blue Jays to get the ball out, and Karen Smith falls right back on his football. Well, More Smith. than anything, it keeps the sticks moving, and we got a first down. And Karen Smith got to be a little bit tired, and he takes it again and just counters into that line past the 40 up to the 40 three-yard line. Look, it's week nine. He's not tired. He's Absolutely saying, give me the not. ball. You know, he, he's saying, we're, it's like I told you, you know, these two guys are two heavyweight fighters in the middle of the seventh round. They're both bloodied. <laughs> They're looking for a win, right? So Kieran Smith says, give me the football, dude. I got to run this football tonight, and he's taken on that role. I think one of the selling points for Salta Fumaggio to this Holy Cross team was, look, Jesuits got another, another league game next week. We don't. It's an open week for us, so we've got a non-league game. Flags all over the place as we sort this out. So we've got to win this just in case, just in case something happens. If we want to be playing after next week, this is an important win because all we can do, we can help our power rating a little bit, but guess what? We can't help our league standing and we got a little in 9-5A. we got an illegal procedure there. Uh, Greater New Orleans Officials Association gives us the indication somebody just wasn't moving. Great look at the Division I select power ratings entering week eight. Look where Holy Cross and Jesuit are. They're both at 2-6. and six. They're at 22 and at 20, and the top 24 advance to the playoffs. And that's why you worry about, and, and again, Holy Cross has an undefeated East St. John next week, and uh, the Jesuit Blue Jays have um, they, uh, Rummel. They have Rummel next week. That's right. They have Rummel next week, and that's always a battle. Well, you know, like I said, I'm telling you, playoffs in the back of their mind. they got to have a win. You win, you take care of business. You don't win, you might not be even thinking about gassing up the bus going someplace on the road, which is where they would probably go on the road if they make that 2014 bracket. Well, still with a lot of time, 3.09, 3.08 to play in the first half. This is a big third down, third down and nine for the Holy Cross Tigers. Young, nowhere to go that time, even cutting in three Blue Jays hang on and drag him down way short of the first down, and that'll bring up fourth down. Dominic Logides made the initial hit, had some help. Dominic Logides, the fine linebacker, number one right there, comes falling back inside and makes the hit after he's up the field, and he had his eyes on the quarterback, and they gave the ball to the running back, and we've got a timeout, I believe. Jesuit. Jesuit. Timeout, Blue Jays, and uh, why do you want this timeout right here with 2.57 to go, and, and you've got time. You've got a lot of time to run your offense. Right now, as we said, one of the weak points for the Tigers that uh, Salt was very nervous about was the kicking game. It's kicking, well, punting, everything else. Well, Jesuit wants to take the timeout. They want, number one, they don't want to waste them. Number two, they're going to take the timeout because they know they got a chance to get the ball back with as much time possibly in the second quarter to try to put another score on the board and possibly go in up 14 12, right? And it's also to make sure that they got the right personnel on their return team. Uh, Colin Markey will be punting to Jace Larson. Markey standing back at his own 29. Good snap, big rush, and it's blocked. It's blocked, it's on the ground, and uh, the Blue Jays have it at the 20-yard line, and they've got 2 minutes and 51 seconds to play with. What, coming right up the middle for the block there. I think it was number nine, Tyler Otan, on the recovery. Let's see who was on the block. I think that might have been Wyatt Meyer, number 15. Let's see if he comes off the edge there. Holt bangs it up, and it did look like Wyatt Meyer, number 15, just bangs that thing up. A sophomore, 5'8", 185 pounds, excuse me, 165-pound linebacker. Boy, I tell you what, the Jays are in business. You want to know why they call the timeout? They want to make sure they had their block team on the field, the proper the proper personnel. There's the answer to it right there. Nicely said. At the 20-yard line, the edge of the red zone for the Tigers. Blue Jays have it. Perez, and we've got uh, motion procedure against the Blue Jays. New Orleans Officials Association working this game. 
That'll move it back to the 25-yard line after the five-yard penalty. Yeah. Clock is stopped, 251. Yeah, it looked like they got Luke Cunningham right there. Sophomore, right guard, 5'11", 265 pounds. Was a little quick out of the gates. Yes, yeah, like you, an offensive lineman, they get excited. You get the ball deep in somebody's territory, and you guys just ready to jump off that ball. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like, a, like a racehorse ready to go. Keeping it on the ground. They'll go with it to Parker, and he is hit and will lose a yard. Jasper Parker, sophomore, trying to run off tackle right there. Doesn't get much yardage. Look well, like getting forward uh, progress back to right. the 25. Yeah. Slew of white jerseys get there, namely Lance Williams, number 97 defensive end from Holy Cross, pulls them down and, and ragdolls them down to the ground. Okay, Holy Cross, one of their keys defensively, stop the run. If they're keying on the run, do you throw it here? Well, you probably have to on second and 15. No, they're going to keep it on the ground, not much. Few up the middle, again with Parker handling the football. So now clock still running. As we near the two-minute mark, and you're looking at third down and 14. Third and 14. Right now, this is where they're going to probably take a shot, at least for the sticks, right? Yeah, first down is at the 10-yard line, folks. Now remember, they have another timeout to play with. Also, in their back pocket, they have Aiden Corbello with a great leg. Chase Larson up to the top of your screen. He's their top receiver. That's who Perez is looking for. He's looking for him long. He's looking for him in the end zone, and this one's picked off. Intercepted by the Holy Cross Tigers and a good defensive play by Dylan Hazelwood. Oh, Hazelwood plays that nicely. Comes off of the receiver. He's running step for step in phase with Lace Jar uh, Jace Larson. And here it is. Take a look at it. Play action pass. Ball's underthrown. Ball's inside, not where it needed to be, right? That ball needed to be out in front a little bit further, and Dylan Hazelwood comes off, makes a nice play. Maybe the play of the night for the first half for Holy Cross. I like your idea of throwing for the sticks that time. You didn't have to get it all because you still had and have right now 137 on the clock. Don't look for the Tigers to put it up in the air here. They're going to just let some time run off that clock. They'll take... This five-point lead into the halftime locker room. Kieran Smith again. Well, Jesuits got one timeout. They're going to stop the clock again. At least I would. I mean, I'm going to stop that clock again. They're going to run the ball. I'm not going to let them run that clock out on me. I'm going to see if I can get the ball back one more time so I can take a shot as an offense. Clock is still running. Holy Cross needs to get a first down. Here's second and 15. Young will keep it. Around the left side, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Does he stop the clock here with 56, 55, and it's still running? Nobody's stopping the clock third and long. I would have stopped the clock right there if I was Jesuit. I don't think the timeouts are correct on the board. Yeah, Jesuit's got one left. Right. Well, they're, they're letting it run. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, everybody, you know, that's why I'm retired and sitting up here, right? <laughs> so, so, I mean, and, you know, and, and those guys are down there and, 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 and doing their jobs. And, and you know, I, 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 can, I can say these things now, but, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's somebody calls a timeout right there at 16. Look like Holy, Holy Cross, Cross decides timeout. to waste one of their two right there to make sure that they've got things set up straight for the last uh, 16 seconds at third down and long, right? They don't want to fumble the ball or do anything that is going to give Jesuit that chance to throw the ball into the end zone. Yeah, what would you call right here if you're the offensive coordinator for the Tigers Put the ball. try to protect this lead? Into the halftime. Not, not to do anything silly. And, and Quarterback sure sweep with Kobe Young. Yeah, that's <laughs> Number probably two. it. Put the ball in his hands. I'm not going to risk a handoff. I'm just going to run the football. And kind of Young or Smith, either one. Well, I'm not even going to hand the ball off. You're not going to hand it off. That's, uh, it, that's conservative, and I like it. So. That's, a, that's from the old John Kalbacher playbook. The old Holy Cross well, coach. You, and you talk the about that. I was there. A lot of stuff you see now uh, on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 
it, what goes around comes around, right? You, you saw things like this going on in, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Quarterback sweeps, quarterback handoffs, and the old Notre Dame box, which was a shift to the wing tee. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the way the ball was moved there, it, it's, it's, it's the same thing. What goes around today comes around. And, and also, the big thing now is the RPO game. And that's, that's, that's the big addition within the past 10 years. Each team has one timeout remaining. And they did risk the handoff. No, they didn't. Kobe Young keeps it. Kobe Young around the left side. Kobe Young has the first down. And that'll be enough for them to stop the clock after a 16-yard gain by Young. Oh, here's the replay. I, I said don't hand the ball off. They didn't. They didn't. They listened to you. And, and the clock runs out. And what he needed to do was go down inbounds, and he did. Smart play by that young man. Let the clock run out. I'm going to go in with a 12-7 lead. Holy Cross Tigers. And we are at halftime. Wade Kaiser just gave you the score. So we'll take a break, and we'll come back with our halftime show in this big game, the rivalry, right after this. Wait, wait, where? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Back at halftime, it's 12 to 7, Holy Cross leading Jesuit. There have been many memorable moments over this last century of this great series, and uh, there's no one better better to help us take a look back than longtime New Orleans prep sports writer, Ron Bricado. 15 years, New Orleans high school sports, Warren Easton and Jesuit was the premier game. That all changed in 1921 when St. Aloysius formed its first football team. Then they came into the mix, and not to be outdone, the men's club at Holy Cross decided, well, if St. Aloysius is in it, we're going to be in it too. They raised $150 to hire their first coach. Things didn't go well for the new team. Uh, The fledglings were called the mix because of their Irish heritage. And uh, for the first three years, Jess would beat them by a combined score of 140 to nothing. That all changed in 1925 when Holy Cross got an influx of boarding students from Bay St. Louis area who were very talented athletes. Not only did Holy Cross hand Jesuit its first defeat of the young rivalry 45 to nothing, they tied perennial champion Warren Easton in the prep league during that year. Two significant things happened in 1937. The WPA built this 24,500 seat stadium, not exclusively, but mostly for high school sports. And secondly, It was a year the LHSAA uh, instituted a tiebreaker system where if a game was tied, the outcome would be decided by which team had more first downs. If that was tied, it would be which team had more penetrations in the opponent's 20-yard line. And little did they know this rule would be tested right off the bat. A crowd of 9,000 fans sat in the rain through a thrilling football duel between Holy Cross and Jesuit at Loyola Stadium. They watched the two Catholic schools battle to a 6-6 tie. But while Holy Cross held Jesuit to even in points and first downs, the Blue Jays had three more penetrations. And according to the officials who were supposed to keep log of the penetrations and downs, Jesuit was the winner. Not so fast, said the Holy Cross coach. He approached the officials and yelling that they actually had one more first down than Jesuit. The referee wouldn't change his decision on that, and the Holy Cross took their case to the LHSAA. It took a few months to decide, but after coaches from both schools testified, the head official admitted that the two-man crew did not record downs and penetrations. The LHSAA had no recourse but to declare the game a no game. Let's move on to 1940. By 1929, Loyola had given up football. Tulane was really the only game in town as far as college football is concerned. On a cold November afternoon, Jesuit and Holy Cross battled before a crowd that was incredible. 34,000 
345 crowded into the stadium. A thousand had to be turned away. They had to put up temporary bleachers in the end zone to accommodate the extra people. The game itself wasn't really a classic. Deswitt won the game rather easily, 25 to 7. But the significance of it was the crowd. In 1951, the rivalry took on an extra game. They actually had played twice that year. Holy Cross had uncovered a new star in Joe Delaney. And that Sunday afternoon, they really rose to the occasion and defeated Jesuit 20 to 13. Previously unknown and unheard of, Delaney scored all three touchdowns. The victory made Holy Cross the only undefeated team in the state in Class AA. And they were just two games away from winning the third consecutive district championship and entering the playoffs with just Forche and Nichols left to play. But Nichols, playing the game of the year with a 3-5 and five record, upset the Tigers 25-6, to six, giving them the, their first loss. Jesuit also had just one loss. And at the end of the season, because the LHSAA took just one team from each area, the two had to play again. Holy Cross staged one of the greatest comebacks ever seen in high school football that year. Trailing 14-6 near the end of the third quarter, Holy Cross scored one touchdown before the period ended and came back and scored again with three minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the game to win 18-14 and gain a berth in the South Louisiana playoffs. But with the teams having played twice in 1951, and all of a sudden in 1963, they have to do it again. But this time, the coaches are brothers-in-law. Jesuit lost the first two games and would lose a third to Redemptress, entering the final game of the regular season against the Tigers. The hard-fought defensive struggle before 20,000 people at City Park Stadium. Holy Cross defeated Jesuit 7 to nothing to win the Catholic League championship Victory enabled the Tigers to finish a regular season campaign with an undefeated but one side record. But Jesuit wasn't finished. This year, picture of
Back at halftime, the rivalry. This is the centennial celebration in the 103rd meeting of Holy Cross and Jesuit, and the Holy Cross Tigers lead at halftime 12-7 to over the Jesuit Blue Jays. Ken Berthelot, along with Wade Kaiser. And, uh, Wade, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I, I, I don't... I don't think you can write a better script for uh, the Holy Cross Tigers and Nick Saltafamaggio. He wanted to be able to control the line of scrimmage. He wanted to be able to run the football. We, we know his quarterback was injured, so he, he's taking his best athlete, which might be one of the best athletes in the stadium right now, Kobe Young. They moved him to quarterback, and, you know, fairly simple. Hand the ball off to a fine running back, Kieran Smith, or keep the ball, right? And then just when we thought that he couldn't throw it vertically, what does he do? He throws it to Finn Martin for a touchdown. Yeah, we'll, so we'll it's, look it's, at that it's, just it's, a moment. Right. It kind of, it's kind of the perfect script for Holy Cross. They're controlling things right now. Jesuits got to come up with some answers. First half stats. Take a look at them. And you didn't expect to see much passing yardage for Holy Cross, but a 61 of those passing yards for Holy Cross came on the touchdown pass, and they only threw it twice. Well, the thing that jumps out to me is the 150-yard rush. rushing, yeah. right? And, you know, Jesuits are a rushing team. They're going to throw a bevy of backs at you. But look at that 150 for Holy Cross. You can tell they are controlling the line of scrimmage. That's what they wanted to do. And like I said, you couldn't have asked for a better script right now for Holy Cross at halftime. Let's take a look at that big play for Holy Cross because this is the one that made all the difference. No one was expecting Kobe Young to throw it, but bingo, he does. 61 yards up in the air, and Finn Morton gets behind everybody and scores. Well, as you take a look at the Holy Cross band, you're seeing some alumni with the band, the, the students, of course, in uniform. But if you can see at the 42-yard <laughs> awesome. line, there's a football player, a Holy Cross football. Make that the 47-yard line. He's coming off the field right behind the cheerleaders and the alumni cheerleaders. He took his shoulder pads off, his helmet off, took his jersey off, and he's playing in the band at halftime, marching with the band. And Wade Kaiser, I loved your comment on this. He's... Right next to the drum major to the left side, folks. You see the drummers, the bass drum, and right in front of that bass drum is the Holy Cross football player who took the uniform off and is playing in the band. Well, that's what it's all about. That's what high school experience is about. Co-curricular activities, being involved in athletics, but also in the band, and every other co-curricular activity you can possibly be belonged in as long as you're taking care of your academics. That's what high school experience it is all about. Kudos to Holy Cross. Kudos to Nick Saltafamacho for allowing one of his players to take his stuff off and come out and play a trumpet at halftime. It's number 98, Mikey Taylor, uh, a kicker, a freshman kicker. And uh, I agree with everything you just said. Uh, man, congratulations, Assault, for letting him do that. And congratulations, Mikey Taylor, for showing you can be just that well-rounded to be able to play in the band and also be able to play on the football team. Isn't that special? It is special. I had two young men that did that for me. when I, My first head coaching job at Vermilion Catholic out in Abbeville. We had a small band there, and they would take their pads off at halftime, and they'd run out of the locker room and, and, and go play whatever instrument that they played in. And, and I, I agree. It's, it's a part of the whole high school experience. You know, this rivalry brings back some great stories as we watch now the homestanding Jesuit Blue Jay Band, uh, and they will perform uh, another good band I tell you what, need some good football teams in nine five a, but there's some pretty doggone good bands in nine five a also. Oh, there's some the great ha League. there's some great halftime shows, no doubt about it. You talk about some of the stories, though. You know, there are a couple stories from the standpoint that that I was experienced with. That one of the legends of the game tonight for Holy Cross is Harry Nunez, and what a great man he. Coach Nunez coached me when I was in high school back in the seventies, and he, you know what a great inspiration he was in my life. I had the opportunity later down the line as I became a young head coach to coach against him when he was the head coach at St. Paul's. He is a gentleman coach. Uh, somebody uh, gave me that term up here tonight in the press box and they couldn't have said it any better. Uh, gentleman coach, outstanding person, outstanding family man. Well, we have a chance to look at some scores from around uh, 
the high school world tonight. Let's take a look at uh, some of these other games. And remember, please visit Louisiana's best scoreboard at CrescentCitySports.com, presented by the All-State Sugar Bowl. And, uh, wow, let's just take a look at, at some of these, Wade, and see what, see what we find. First of all, we're looking at uh, St. Charles Catholic and Metairie Country Day. St. Charles 35-14 to 14 over Country Day. That's a final earlier today. Well, they played at 4 o'clock kickoff, I'm sure, over at Metairie Park Country Day, day game. And uh, St. Charles Catholic is kind of getting well. They've been hurt the past couple of weeks. McDonough 35 blowing out uh, Frederick Douglass 50 to nothing. That's also a final. And... Uh, Take a look around some of the other scores here. We've got uh, Isidore Newman and Arch Manning leading ML King Charter 17-6 at the end of three. South Plaquemine and uh, Mentorship Academy uh, just getting started real late there. Salmon and Pearl River at the second quarter. Salmon leading 36-29. A lot of scoring in that one. Anything surprise you here? St. James at halftime leading Berwick 33-27. Uh, St. James good football team, right? They're they're just they're 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 hitting their playoff stride right here in week 9 getting ready to go into the playoffs, which will be a 28 uh, team bracket that they'll go into uh, when they go in in two weeks. Lakeshore leading Archbishop Hannon at half 28-7 to seven. and how about Archbishop Shaw and Hank Tierney 41-6 well, in the fourth quarter over Higgins. We did them earlier in the season on on uh, Crescent City Sports and you know they were struggling in week one or week two when we did them. Now they are hitting stride. Hank's got them turned around and heading in the right direction. St. Paul's at the in, in the second quarter leading Ponchatoula 10 to nothing. Well, that's that's a North Shore battle, right? All those games right now in the North Shore battles for those playoff positions. How about uh, North Shore leading Covington, 35-13 in the second quarter. Second quarter, Destrahan, 42, East St. John, 7. Well, that was for the district championship down there in 7-5-A. Destrahan might be, might be the best football team in, you know, southeastern Louisiana right now. I don't know if Carr has something to say about that, but Destrahan's pretty darn good. Slidell really strong this season. 21 nothing at halftime over Fountain Blue. Well, that's, again, one of those North Shore games. That's a, that's a big one. By the way, folks, we're getting all of these scores off CrescentCitySports.com. Best scoreboard anywhere. You can go to CrescentCitySports.com and find it. Third quarter, John Curtis and Brother Morton. Brother Morton in the third quarter, leading John Curtis 14-13 by one. You know, Brother Martin's going through a lot of these wars, right? They played a lot of close games all year. Last week we called the Rummel game where they lost 3 nothing up at Southeastern, and now they're in another dogfight with John Curtis up 1.14-13. Also in the Catholic League, look up at Nakar, number 21-7 20, over Rummel in the second quarter. Uh, these are early scores. Chalmette leading Bonneville 28-7. Of course, here it's the Holy Cross Tigers at halftime leading Jesuit 12-7. to And uh, a couple of other games are going to take place tomorrow. Homer Christian at Thomas Jefferson, Abramson and Warren Easton, Dilla Sal and Eleanor McMain, uh, Haynes Academy and Livingston Collegiate all take place tomorrow. Really impressed with that De La Salle football team. Those guys are on a roll. Graham Jarrett, who was on my staff at Jesuit, a Nickel State alum, is doing a great job at his alma mater, De La Salle. Yeah. Uh, visit CrescentCitySports.com, and uh, you'll be able to keep up with uh, the scores almost as they happen from high school games all around the state. The Holy Cross Tigers coming back out on the field. Jesuit not yet entering the tunnel. If you're both coaches, all right, take it from the Nick Salta Famaggio side and from the Ryan Manali side at Jesuit. What are you telling your teams at halftime? Nick Salta Famaggio is telling his guys this fight isn't over. <laughs> You've just finished the ninth round. We're going 15. It's a war. Be more physical. Win the line of scrimmage. That's what he's telling them. That's exactly what he told them. Jesuit right now is trying to find a way to stop the run. I don't know if they're going to have to bring somebody down into the box, play with nine maybe in the box. Are they going to have to change the way they do things out on the perimeter, maybe play some man and get more people in the box. They've got to stop the run game. And offensively, when they get their hands on the football, like I said, when, because Holy Cross is controlling a lot of time, 
when Jesuit gets their hands on the ball, they want to make sure that they don't make mistakes and they got to come away with points every time they put their hands on the ball because you got to look at it. If Holy Cross is going to control the time of possession in the second half, they might not get their hands on the ball, but maybe three more times in the second half. Interestingly, it was Salta Famaggio who said uh, if he won the toss to start the game, he would have chosen to kick off, trust his defense to make a stop because he was worried about, you know, you don't have Cole Canatella, your starting quarterback, out with the shoulder injury, even though he is dressed out, and I think that's just a uh, kind of a Newt Rockney thing for Holy Cross in this game, just seeing him out there because he's done for the season. He could be out and playing close, but you just see him out there. He's dressed out. I think maybe that gives a little middle lift, a little spiritual lift maybe uh, to the Holy Cross Tiger team. Seem to, but to start this game, Salt was, we might be better off putting it into the hands of the defense first. Work just the opposite. He gets the ball, eats up most of the first quarter, eight minutes and 56 seconds of it, goes 18 plays, 17 on the ground. So we did at halftime have some legends of the game, and uh, the legends of the game for Holy Cross and Jesuit were Harry Nunez, class of 62 for the Holy Cross Tigers, and Steve Foley, class of 71 for the Jesuit Blue Jays. Harry Nunez led Holy Cross to a 13-0 victory over Jesuit in 1961, snapping a five-game Jesuit win streak in the series. He was a four-year letterman in both football and baseball, and he made the all-state team in football and all-district in both sports. At Southeastern, Nunez earned team MVP honors in 1965, and he led the Lions in rushing and was a two-time all-conference fullback. He coached at both Holy Cross and Jesuit, coached Wade Kaiser, as Wade told you earlier, and is a member of the Southeastern and Holy Cross Sports Halls of Fame. Jesuit Steve Foley, class of 71, quarterback the Blue Jays to a 13-7 victory over the Holy Cross Tigers. 13-7 victory, rather, over Holy Cross in 1970, snapping a five-game Holy Cross win streak in the series and also was a standout in track at Jesuit. Went on to play quarterback at Tulane and then played 11 seasons as a defensive back with the Denver Broncos, twice reaching the Super Bowl. His 44 career interceptions remain a Broncos record. Foley is in the Louisiana and the Greater New Orleans Sports Hall of Fames along with the Tulane Athletics Hall of Fame. Congratulations to our legends of the game. Jesuits Steve Foley, class of 71, and Holy Cross Harry Nunez, Jr., class of 62. An honor to just have watched those guys play, to know those guys, and occasionally get to chat with them. Well, Steve Foley, I had the honor of playing with his younger brother, Richie, who son is a corner uh, defensive back for Jesuit um, this season, and he's not playing tonight. He's hurt. We saw he was on the sidelines with a, uh, some sort yeah. of shoulder injury and a sling. Yeah. But Richie... Richie was Steve's brother, so I got to meet Steve. What a great guy he was. And then, of course, we got to watch his career. I asked Steve if, if uh, Nick had uh, Foley had made a choice or, or made a commitment. He says, no, not yet. And he says, but man, there's a lot of people interested. <laughs> I said, don't, you don't have to go to it, into it any further than that. And a lot of them in this state are interested. And not all of them are at the FCS level. I can promise you that. There's some... Big schools, almost everyone that has an interest in Mr. Foley. Well, that'd be great if he ended up at Tulane. It right? really would be. That would just well, carry Richie, on. Well, Richie played at Southeastern. And then we all know at Tulane, the other three brothers played at Tulane. Uh, yeah, there's so many so, Foley's there. You, you actually have to look at a family tree just to right. keep them, as you start to talk about their accomplishments at Tulane. They, play, they played right. on a great Tulane team also with a guy named Mark Oliver that was a great Jesuit Blue Jay that – uh, also played with the Foley's at Tulane. He was an outstanding defensive lineman at Tulane and a, and a fine defensive lineman at Jesuit. For a long time, he had the film, I think, of the 73 Tulane LSU game, and he found it. He couldn't find it for a while. He found it, and I think now he, he's he's got it transferred, and I think you could find it on YouTube. I'm not sure about that. I did a search, but I'm not well, real good at that. Well, but <laughs> They say you can find anything you want on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. I haven't found a lot of things because I don't go look on YouTube. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but if, if the statement you're saying, if it was on YouTube, they say you can find it there. And uh, maybe I'll go home and ask my youngest son. He, he, <laughs> he, he figures that stuff out for me. And then, yeah, 
that would be a pretty nice thing. So right. we're just about ready to go. Get set here for its second half action in the rivalry, the 103rd meeting of Holy Cross and Jesuit. Jesuit had won the toss and they deferred. Kicked off to the Tigers, who took that opening kickoff 80 yards in 18 plays, 17 of them runs. Ate up 8 minutes and 56 seconds, took a 6 nothing lead after a blocked extra point. The Tigers went ahead 12 nothing when, uh, surprisingly, they actually threw the long pass. Kobe Young to Finn Martin, 61 yards to make it 12 nothing blocked extra point. Then finally the Blue Jays got their offense going, and Perez, the quarterback, was able to keep and score. So we are underway with second-half action from the 10. Blue Jays ball. They'll get a 20-yard return out to the 30, and that is Roman Laure again, the freshman. Love to see freshman get a little playing time right there. He gets the kick off, gets up the field, gets a little land yap yardage right there. Good blocking by the Blue Jay return unit. And this freshman gets a little playing time, and he's going to go running off the field just with a big smile on his face. And I'll tell you what, he is uh, in no way shy with that football. He just took it right right into the into the crowd and got a nice return of 20 on it. Gives the Blue Jays good field position to start at their own 30. First and 10. So good play action by Perez and he'll throw and Larson has to make a falling catch but picks up five or six on it to the 36. Second down and short. Second lot, and four. Right. A lot of cushion given to Larson by that Holy Cross secondary. So he just breaks his route off right in the cushion area. The ball's delivered just a little low like we like you just said. But it brings up a nice second down for a Jesuit. And, you know, with second and short like this, this brings a lot of things into play off that place sheet. Let's see if they use any of those things with three wide outs up to the high side of your screen. And they do. They will throw it that big flanker screen up there. And that'll be enough for a first down across the 40. And Pretty good play. Great play by Jace Larson right there. He caught the flanker screen with two blockers out in front of him, and he gets really nice yardage on this. Good look at it again. It's off play action pass. That's not RPO because it is not really a, a run read or a pass read. That was all set up to be a wide receiver screen to Jace Larson. This time they speed it up, as you said, just a little bit, and... Uh, Get that pass caught and complete to Jacob Washington. Jacob Washington, the other wide receiver in that trio of Blue Jay receivers. He's a sophomore, six foot three, 170 pounds. His seventh catch of the year. They're picking up the pace a little bit on second down. Good play action again. This time he's going to go down the sideline streaking. And did he get it? Looks like a nice grab if he did. And that is just a real fine catch on the far sideline. And this time, it's Jacob Washington again, a 30-yard completion. And, boy, the Blue Jays, as you say, picking up the pace of this game. They're going to go real quick. Setting the tempo. See if they can catch the Tiger defense on its bounds. Boy, Perez took a pretty hard hit after handing that ball off that time to Duplessis. But Duplessis goes forward for three. Holy Cross rotating, rotating a few defensive linemen in there to try to Give them a breather when you pick up that pace like that and you're going fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. You know, anybody that, 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 that plays at that type of pace is going to have to, especially if you're chasing a quarterback or a running back around defensively, you're going to have to get a blow every now and then. So what they're going to do is they're going to obviously sub a few defensive linemen in. Perez has Duplessis on the side of him. As motion to the left, he'll go that way. He'll throw it long into the end zone, and that's knocked down. Good defensive play on the last minute by Reese Garden. Reese Gordon, also Jake Roberts there. Hey, ball's underthrown. Needed to be overthrown right here. Bo Perez just doesn't get enough air on it. Yeah. So Jay really Larson has to stop and come back to it. That's not a backside shoulder throw, right? It's just underthrown, so that gives Roberts a nice chance to go up. Roberts had a chance at a pick on that. You know what, if that's high, even if it's high and a little bit longer, right. then your receiver is good. It's the only one back there that can jump up and get it. Correct. A little more air on that is what was needed. 
Third down eight. Good play action under pressure, and he'll just dump it off. He downed it. It's like he threw it. It was a forward pass down into the ground. Well, it could have been a fumble, could have been forward pass, but 58 is right there to jump on it any way you look at it. I thought his arm was coming forward. Let's see. You be the judge. Uh, looked like his arm was coming forward, like you said. Ethan Shankel, offensive lineman, was right there to fall on it, whether it was a fumble or any or a forward pass. You don't want to take a chance. But I tell you what, the pressure came off of the Blue Jay left side out there, brought outside linebacker, if I'm not mistaken, Braden Prince or Jordan Johnson could have been also involved in that. Now this will be a 38-yard field goal by Aiden Corbello. He's got enough leg. He's a strong leg to kicker. And he's usually pretty consistent. Ball's placed down well. Carbello's kick is up. It is long enough. It is good. And Carbello gets a 38-yard field goal to make this a two-point game. 12-10. Holy Cross with the lead. What a weapon that is, right? So you get into his wheelhouse, which is perfectly in range. Look at the mechanism. Everything's down. Everything's up. Everything's tight in the protection. That gives Corbello plenty enough time to get that thing off in about 1.2 seconds or less. And it results in three points. You know, as you're sitting here watching this, you look at the perfection that has to take place with a football offense and... Uh, well, we'll get into that in just a moment. Let me take this opportunity to remind you that tonight's coverage on Crescent City Sports is brought to you by TMJ and Sleep Therapy Center of New Orleans, specializing in treatment of craniofacial pain and sleep breathing disorders from birth to adulthood. Dr. Terry Billings and Dr. Emily Levy offer alternatives to CPAP machines, treat headaches and facial pain, and access craniofacial development in children. They'll assess it. They'll access it. They'll, they'll solve it. Hey, call 504-832-2222. It's all twos. 504-832, all twos. And help restore your health and live a pain-free life. Kickoff is up. It's high. It's short. Was, did he call a fair catch? No, it was it was kicked out of bounds. He was aiming for a soft spot right over there in that Holy Cross uh, return team. And it just didn't get up high enough. And the ball bounces out of, out of bounds. Well, if you're the Tigers' defense, if you're Salter, uh, Nick Salter from Maggio, you've got to feel like you gave up three, but you didn't give up the touchdown. Well, that, you yeah, still got the lead, so that's sort of a defensive win, I think, for the Tigers on that opening series of the second half. Huge right? win. Give up three, not seven. You survived the round. Now control the time on the ball. Oh, my goodness, look who's in at quarterback. Look who's in at quarterback. Hannah Teller with the supper, with supposedly with the separated shoulder, maybe healed, all bundled up, and he'll throw it off to the right side. And we've got a completion by the Tigers to Derek Johnson. Oh, Canatella comes in. We thought he was going to be out all night, but he's no dressed. Kidding. He's in there. We thought it was more of a just motivational thing to have him dressed in on the sideline, but he comes out here in the second half and showing that, hey, the, uh, the shoulder's okay. I can do a little bit with it. They're going to have to give him good protection. They do, and once again, same receiver, and the Tigers have him a first down with back-to-back -back passes. Derek Johnson again. Flagged down, however. Hold everything. Well, he swings the ball out to Derek Johnson to get him going. Let's see what our flag is. Looks like we might have a holding. Now, while they separate that out, Cole Canatella, two weeks ago in the Brother Martin game, third quarter, had to leave the game with a shoulder injury. The early diagnosis was separated shoulder. Weren't sure. Then it was just maybe shoulder injury. And um, looked like he might be out for more than one game. He missed the rest of that Brother Martin game and all last week against Carr. And uh, without him, the Tigers just had no passing game. Well, tonight here, they, they haven't really needed it much, so it's kind of this is a, a huge surprise to me. Got to be just one of those motivational moves. A wobbly pass, but somehow it's pulled in by Derek Johnson again. Three throws from Canatella, who surprisingly comes off the sideline. Three completions to Derek Johnson, the sophomore. We've got somebody down for Jesuit over on the 
uh, screen's right hash. That's Joey well, yeah. Haas. Yeah, Joey Haas is down. Let's hope he's okay. But but here's the deal, right? Okay, so we've got a flare screen pass right, flare screen pass left, flare screen pass right, correct? Uh, controlling the clock is, is your ally, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. They were controlling the clock very well in the first half. I, I this this is a total surprise to me that you would you would bring in Canatella right now and and kind of start shooting that ball out into the flat right now. You know, incomplete stops the clock, right? Yes, it does. Okay, so and Canatella still in there. Yeah. So here's his fourth snap. This time he'll hand off. He run Smith. Straight ahead, and I think that maybe Salter Fumaggio was thinking if they see him back there, he got the first down. That was the object of that run. Move the chains, and they did. They're thinking, okay, Jesuit's got to be thinking, this guy's not going to throw because he had the shoulder injury two games ago. So if he's not going to throw, let's key on the run, and he comes out throwing the ball three straight times. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, well, it, it, I'm going to throw the ball. I better get it in number two's hands also. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's the best athlete in this stadium tonight. Well, here's the handoff. Kieran Smith and uh, Smith bumped out of bounds. That was a hard hit, but that was a hit of three players all bumping together at the same time and a gain of five. That was Nick Jacobs coming up. I like that hit. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. Yeah. Watch it. Okay. Watch Let's it take a look here. at it on the boundary. This I is think good hard three, nose football. All bump. Watch. Bang. Boom. All Ooh. three people. Nice. It's a triangle hit. Nice, nice, nice. I like that. That's that's the way you play hard nose football. You put those shoulder pads on somebody and light them up. Here's the handoff, Kieran Smith, and he's got the first down and more. He is inside the 45 yard line. They'll mark it right at the 45. Hey, love how this guy runs in between the tackles. There is no fear in this freshman, right? Watch him take the inside veer, or excuse me, the inside zone. Handoff right there, and he sees a crease, and he's going north and south. Like I said, no fear from this freshman. Nick Salta Fumaggio said, if we are going to win this football game, we've got to get Kobe Young in space. The only way you can get him in space is you've got to remove him from the backfield. And with Canatella off the bench dressed out doing it, you can do just that. Flag thrown, flag thrown as Kieran Smith. And a second flag thrown as he fights for second yardage. Nice gain down to the 22-yard line of 22 yards. But let's see if this one's coming back you're or gonna, will stay. Right. You're going to probably see a hold one way, and you might see a face mask another. Officials from the New Orleans Association. But did you see the hard running downhill? Bouncing off of people, lowering his shoulders. You watch the Karen hits. Smith. You watch the hits in this game. You watch the plays in this game. You wouldn't think you've got two teams that are basically standing on the bottom of the 9-5A standings, uh, both winless in, in league play because they're not playing like it tonight. There's the call. Yeah, well, we had a holding one way, and we had a face mask the other. Let's take a look at the inside zone. Nice job by this offensive line getting great movement up front. Spinning, moving, taking hits right there. Well, you're talking about the physical play tonight. Can, the, the bottom line is this. Like I told you, this is a heavyweight fight. Yeah. These guys aren't worried about next week. <laughs> They're You're worried right. about getting a win, right? Yeah. These guys need a win. They're two wounded animals sitting in the corner, and they're coming out swinging, and they're coming out fighting. You know. Sometimes it's just Holy Cross, Jesuit. Tonight, it's Jesuit, it's, Holy it's, Cross, and uh, maybe an extended season after next week, and they're playing like it. He stays in there. He's going to throw it long into a crowd. This one's picked off by Jesuit. And nice steal down there by Nick Jacobs. Well, they, they were trying to get the ball deep and stretch the field uh, to, to Kobe Young. I get it. I understand. Right? But you can't throw it into three blue jerseys. Look at this. Yeah. Three blue jerseys. One, two, three right there. He's triple covered. And who comes up with the pick? Nick Jacobs. Let's take a break. We'll be back with the Jesuit Blue Jays offense right after this. Blues Jays have it after the 
Nick Jacobs interception. First and 10. They're at their own 12 yard line. Blue Jays are going to keep it on the ground. We thought Holy Cross might, but coming out with Canatella, who did not play in the first half, has not played since Brother Martin two weeks ago when he was injured. Gained some yardage there. Pick up a four. And that was Jasper Parker, I believe, on that carry. It was four picking up four, and four is Jasper Parker. Bo Perez. This time fakes to Parker, sidesteps his pressure, and uh, could have stepped out of bounds, but decided to fight for the extra yards. And that might be enough, those extra yards, for the first down. Let's see, it's going to be real close. Ron Manali over there giving the official the, the what for. He wanted to hold out there on the edge, and Ryan, I've been there with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Manali, Ron Manali is a graduate of the Wade Kaiser School of no, um, no, handling, no. handling officials by head football coach. No, he, he, he got he got that from my good friend Jay Roth, right? Yes, he did. <laughs> Y'all were both graduates of yeah. Jay Roth School of that, correct? Jay, Jay, Jay Roth could give an official a, a earful too. And you know, there, there, there's the deal. I mean, a Holy Cross player, down. A Holy Cross player down out there applying the pressure to Bo Perez was Jordan Johnson to get him off his throwing spot. And let's see, who is no, that? That's Big Jordan up? Johnson. That's, oh, my that's goodness. I hope the, he's going to be okay. That's one of the better tacklers and one of the stalwarts at the linebacker position for the Holy Cross Tigers. So he is uh, gingerly putting a little pressure on that ankle. He's been applying a lot of pressure all night to Bo Perez. He's been doing a nice job on the run game. He's a good mm -hmm. football player. He's a senior. He's got 35 tackles coming in in one sack. He's 6'2", 197. I said he doesn't look like 197. He looks like he eats a lot more pancakes than that, right? Now, you know, I'm saying up there 210, 215. He's a good football player. Whatever weights they're using on his scale, I'd like to borrow them to use them on my scale because uh, got lay off he, looked, he looked a lot heavier than 197. <laughs> You're not kidding. Goodness. All right, so let's see if Jesuit now will attack the ground game knowing that Jordan Johnson at linebacker is not in there for the Holy Cross Tigers. Well, he did get the first down with that extra effort, and the Blue Jays do take it on the ground and, and test that middle. Defensive line stood up that time to stop. Chase Larson, uh, pardon me, Jasper Parker. And again, they'll go right to where Jordan Johnson would have been had he been in the game and pick up a few more for the Blue Jays, making it third down and four. Well, the other outside linebacker, Cooper Cavillion, comes down the line and makes a nice play on that particular run by Jasper Parker. Cavillion comes in with 54 tackles and one interception on the year. Here's your third down play. Perez with lots of time right over the middle and a good catch made by Jason Thompson. First down, Jesuit Blue Jays keep the drive alive. Jason Thompson goes right across the middle for 13 yards on a big catch, and he's kind of banged up as he's slow getting up off the turf. Nice throw by Bo Perez. Hits him right underneath the uh, linebacker coverage right there as the linebackers vacated out, and they run the slant and completely uh, – run right past the linebackers. I think it looked like he came down on the ball, maybe knocked the wind out of himself. Might have. And, and again, I find the Blue Jays attacking that spot where Jordan Johnson would usually be or feel if he's, if he's not in on a blitz. They're taking a pretty good look right here at the wide receiver. Yeah, I, Jason Thompson, a senior. Yeah, it looks like he came down on his stomach right there on top of the ball. That was his sixth catch. And he's playing with something. Is he getting a snack? Of the season. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's having a snack as he's sitting down right there. Only you could think of that. Well, I, well you know, I, I, I kind of ask questions, right? I kind of see things going on. And 
You know, look, watch. He's going to come down. Oh, nice block right there by the tight end. Hollis McDaniel does a nice block springing him for an extra few yards. That's good football when you're blocking around the point of contact right there, around the point of the play. I like to see that type of stuff blocking downfield. Nick DiGirolamo getting a little extra playing time in the linebacker spot, as is Cohen Johnson. And they come off the bench and get quite a bit of playing time. So Jordan Johnson will be missed a little bit. They've got some help back there. It's the height of Jordan Johnson and the weight of Jordan Johnson that helps. Look at this good push and fight forward by Jasper Parker on the right side to midfield. Gain of eight. Jesuit offensive line getting a lot more physical now as they're growing up tempo again. Now they're going to go speed again. It worked well. Almost too high with the handoff, but Bo Perez able to hold on to the ball and push forward for the first down. Ended up putting that ball almost in the face mask. Quarterback ISO, 83. Hollis McDaniel gets up on the linebacker to spring Bo Perez. And look how quickly they go. Once again. Handing off to Jasper Parker. And Parker pushing down to the 40. This speed-up offense worked well on the opening drive of the second half for the Blue Jays, but they had to settle for a field goal. They're trying it here. And once again, Parker. Parker finding ways to just slither and slide past tacklers. And he's right there at the marker, third down and one, maybe well, this, a little bit less. Right. Well, this is doing a couple things, Ken. It's keeping Holy Cross from able to sub, and the next thing, they're getting extra touches this way by speeding up going NASCAR. Yep. That'll be enough, I believe, for the first down on the handoff to Patrick Berrigan. Or did, are they held him? It's all, it's all up to the mark. It looks West, like it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, it will. And again, it's where the knee goes down, not Correct. where they finish falling. And it did not see the knee, so it's going to be fourth and inches. Little maybe out of Carbella's range, so why not keep it and go for it on fourth and inches? Is this going to be a keeper by Bo Perez? It's a little trick play. Look who gets under center real quick, Jace Larson. Jace Larson trying to pull him offside, but Holy Cross doesn't jump, so now Larson will go back in the other direction. And Perez gets it. Everybody's in there pointing. One guy says fourth down. The other one says first down. Everybody's arguing. They're like attorneys, you know, in, well, I, in, in a I courtroom, think, right? So. I think what happened is a couple of Holy Cross Tigers got fired up. Hollis McDaniel, uh, some people may have thought that Hollis McDaniel had the ball in the handoff. He was that halfback tight end going through the line. And it was a good fake by by quarterback Bo Perez. Well, you know what? They mark it. Maybe Perez's knee went down on the other side of that pile that we couldn't see. That's well, going to be close. It will be. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a hold by Holy Cross. A whisker uh, on the football. Apparently that's wow. what happened. A Bo whisker. Perez's knee went down yes. before he fell forward for the yard to gain, and they marked the ball properly, and... Oh, my goodness. So Holy Cross was right. They were getting up, holding up fist, is saying it's fourth down. They get the measurement. What a play at 244 in the third quarter. That is huge. And, and I'll tell, wow, I'll tell you, we couldn't see exactly where the knee went down on Perez, but excellent job by the New Orleans officials to have caught that and, and got the spot on it. So who's coming in? So... Kobe Young back in at quarterback. Holy Cross may decide, hey, let's go back to the running game. That didn't fool anybody. And uh, Kieran Young, uh, Smith, Kieran Smith, pardon me. That play just didn't it did, look Yeah, like, it didn't start. Look, some, it's, it's, Something's wrong here. It's busted from the beginning. Yeah, it's busted at from the, the beginning. Right. So, uh, Kieran Smith. Wyatt. Mir does a nice job, and, and I, I got to apologize. I've been pronouncing Wyatt's last name wrong all evening, and I was corrected at halftime. Instead of Meyer, I've been, it, it is Mir. Yes. I apologize to the Mir family. Does a nice job coming across, stacking everything up in the backfield. Second and long. Young on the keeper has to step inside. Blue Jays there for it. Gets a few, but not back to the original line of scrimmage, making this now third down and about 14. 
14 and a half. Well, it all went back to the first down, right? Everybody says, what is your third down conversion rate? I never cared about my third down conversion rate. I cared about my what are you first, doing first down. down? What, what am doing I doing on first down? On first down? Because exactly. first down is going to give me inside the chains, keep me on schedule, give me a good second down. Hey, then that third down conversion rate is going to be pretty darn good. Oh, now we've got a guy that's got to throw the ball, and he won't. He says, nope, maybe they're expecting the pass, and Young's going to keep it, and he will be tackled about four yards short of a first down at the 41-yard line of Holy Cross, now facing fourth and four, but they've got this clock down. Approaching the final minute of the third quarter. All right. So, you know, let's go back to that first down play, right? That was a bust. They, the something one. happened, miscommunication, something happened, who knows. But it didn't work. Mirror makes a great play in the backfield, and now you're staring at fourth and four. They would have stayed on schedule on first down, not had that bust. It would have been something different. Probably move the chains first down. Last punt was blocked. This one a high snap. Pressure's on. He does get this punt off. Fair catch called for and made at the 25-yard line of the Blue Jays. So Colin, or Colin Markey, 34-yard punt, gets the Tigers out of a bind. And the Blue Jays will take it over with uh, 34 seconds to play in the third quarter. Uh, this one giving... Uh, Holy Cross Jesuit fans, just about everything they would expect and want from the rivalry. Well, here we go. We're going to 34 seconds before we go in the fourth quarter. Jesuit, see if they come back out and go tempo with this offensive series. Nick Salter from Agio said this, this game means a lot to him since he's been back at Holy Cross because he's 62 years old, born in 1960. He said his mom and dad would bring him to the games. In 1963, at three years old, he made his first Holy Cross Jesuit game. So it does mean a lot. Bo Perez on the run, throws incomplete. Good hit right as that ball was pulled in by the Blue Jays. Dylan Hazelwood with the hit on that one. Holy Cross jumps into a five-man front. Okay, first time we've seen that tonight. We've seen either a three-man front or a four-man front. They come with a five-man front, and they change their coverage a little bit. That puts Dylan Hazelwood in a nice position to make a nice hit and a nice play on that first down pass by Bo Perez. Second down and ten. Perez with the play action again. This time throws it out complete to Jace Larson. Larson got it at the 35. Let's see where they spot it right in front of the Holy Cross bench. Will be just short of a first down out of bounds. Clock stopped at 24 or with 24 seconds to go. You want a little respect for some speed? Holy Cross has some respect for Jace Larson's speed, right? Yeah. They are playing him anywhere from 7 to 10 yards off the ball. So you take what you get, right? You run your route, you break your route, catch the ball, get vertical. And it's going to set up a nice short third down for the Jesuit offense. And this time Perez will keep himself and gets a good run out of it. They cannot bring Perez down. Flags comes flying in from one of the officials way downfield. And let's see what happens here. I think they're going to tack a little on to this run. Might have a face mask. Blue Jays making the most out of these final seconds in the third quarter. Face mask it is. Well, that's hidden yardage. Those are things you don't want to do if you're in a two-point game going into the fourth quarter in a fight like this, right? All right. We had the offsetting penalties back in the first half. I don't think we've had uh, that, that a 14 and a 15-yard penalty is what Holy Cross has had so far. Right. That's it. Yeah. So, so it, it's tacked on to the end of the play. So here we go, and it puts Jesuit in great field position. Ten seconds to go in the in the third quarter, pardon me. And uh, they'll just keep this ball on the ground. They might let this clock run out. It will run out. That is the end of the third quarter in the 103rd meeting of Holy Cross and Jesuit. This is the centennial year. The score after three, Holy Cross 12, Jesuit 10. Which, come out, we're come 
Huh? Scholar, hold on. Ken, Ken, yes. Wait, hold on. Coming out with Scholar at. I gotta find it. Hold on. I moved them all around. I got it. Go ahead. Ready? Scholar yep. Our scholar athletes for the game, one each from Holy Cross and Jesuit, honoring senior lettermen holding the highest academic standards from each team. Holy Cross linebacker safety Garrett Cantrell, a 4.64 GPA, three-year letterman, senior class president, member of the National Honor Society, and student ambassadors program. For Jesuit, left tackle Roland Wagaspak. A 4.6 GPA, three-year letterman, student council president, big brother, member of the National Honor Society, and campus ministry and peer support. Congratulations to both scholar-athletes of this game and of this rivalry year. For Holy Cross, safety Garrett Cantrell. For Jesuit, left tackle Roland Wagaspak. You know, Kenny, I couldn't even spell 4.6. <laughs> It was the point that got you. <laughs> Throw out to Chase Larson right side. Good sidestep by Larson. Look at him go. Larson into the end zone. First play of the fourth quarter. Touchdown, Jesuit Blue Jays, who have taken the lead. A 34-yard touchdown for the Jays. You want to know why they were giving Chase Larson so much room? That's why. That's His why. athletic talent is, is really nice, right? So he catches the ball, makes one little move, makes another move, makes another white hat miss him, and he walks down the boundary into the end zone. Listen, Perez put it where it had to be, but give him no... That was Jace Larson. They're going to go for two. Jace Larson way back there. Yep, little razzle-dazzle on this one. Jace Larson to throw it into the end zone. It is tipped away! Uh, wow! A play-breaking tip away by, I believe, Reese Garden. Well, Reese Gordon makes a great play. The ball was intended for Jared Duplantis yeah. by uh, Jace Larson trying to catch that lateral and then throw it forward again. you got to throw it backwards to throw it forwards. They throw it backwards. He throws it forwards. Great play, great tip right there. Knocks the ball away, and the two-point play doesn't work. Wow. Wow, that, that was exciting, right? But how, how Jace Larson is pretty darn good. How athletic is he, right? I mean, move this way, move that way, makes two people in white jerseys miss, and he's right down the boundary. And let's not forget, he's got speed. Well, and he has speed, right? Look, he's, he's, I've been watching him for three years. He's, he's a outstanding wide receiver. Well, that makes it 16-12. That's why Jesuit wanted that two-point conversion to make it 18-12 since Holy Cross struggles with their kicking game at all levels. They've had two extra points blocked tonight. One punt blocked tonight, the Tigers did. Ryan Manali had to feel like, man, if we can get to 18, the, the most they can do is tie it. Now Aiden Corbello will kick it off. And Corbello, again, with the strong leg, puts it into the end zone. And it's coming out. Well, look, Holy Cross can't panic here, right? <laughs> they've controlled the clock. They've controlled the line of scrimmage. They've ran the ball successfully all night long. You know, they can't panic here. They need to go back to page one of their playbook that they came in tonight, run that football, use Karen Smith, use number two Kobe Young, right? <laughs> and let's go attack downhill again at that Jesuit defense. Another look at the touchdown there by Jace Larson. Yeah, we were a little surprised when the Tigers had Cole Canatella come out. and uh, But Cole played well and, and, and showed that he could throw, that that shoulder is okay. Not, not perfectly healed, but okay. But they're going to stick with Kobe Young as they did on that play on first down for a pickup of two, making it second down and eight. So now it's a battle of ball control for both teams, but... If you're behind, you got to make sure you get it down there and get some points. And remember, Holy Cross has to score the touchdown. They cannot count on or rely on a kicking game here. So it's going to be a lot of Smith and Young. And that time, it was Smith, Tyron Smith. 
Brought down by Braden Helm. We've called his name a couple times tonight. He's part of that Helm football legacy at Jesuit. <laughs> Boy, it seems like every year they have one of the Helm boys playing, right? And I had the great opportunity to coach a couple of them. What a great family they are, and they've, they've raised some great football players in that family. A lot of Jesuits. Uh, I, know, I believe that's what we said earlier. Bunky, I believe, is the one that went to Holy Cross. And Young started to go outside, and that's a dangerous tackle right there because he had to really move that body as he was bent over backwards. Let's see if he gets up and he's okay, and he does. Brought down by Helm again right there. Brought a blitz off the corner by Lud. See, but he's lumping a little bit as he comes off, so let's see if he's going to be okay. He was tackled in an odd way and had to go backwards, and if he couldn't get his feet out of the way on that tackle, it's going to shake him up, and that's probably the second... If not the second best player, because I believe Carr's got the first in 9-5-A, maybe one of the top three. And Holy Cross cannot afford to not have Young and Canatella in this game. So here's your fourth down. Punt just got the snap off in time. And uh, this is returnable. Well, Holy Cross almost doesn't get that off. They have wrong personnel. They're out yeah. there with 12. They run a guy off the field. Larson. They run somebody on. And, you know, that was almost a huge mistake. They're lucky that 40-second clock didn't run out. Well, Markey got a 30-yard punt, 6-yard return by Jace Larson. And you're absolutely right. Sometimes you're just lucky enough to avoid disaster. And I think that sometimes... A play happens or something happens, and it, it'll destroy you off a little bit. And I believe when they watched uh, Kobe Young come off limping a little bit after a really – he wasn't tackled. He was tackled with a good hit. It's just that he had people around him where he went down oddly. And you got to hope he's going to be okay and be able to come out. Meanwhile, hey, this is uh, what – Salt of Maggio feared, having to punt and on a short field and give Jesuit great field position, and they do right there, and they blow that one dead as the Blue Jays hand that off to Henry Reinhardt. And Ian Tate is on the stop. Well, Jesuit takes over with great field position and momentum, right? That is exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to do something here with this momentum. They do not want to let it fizzle out as the clock continues to run. Nearing the nine-minute mark, 9.15, and counting down. Blue Jays in great field position, second and nine at the Holy Cross, 49, and Chase Larson up at the top of your screen. Bo Perez likes him, and this one's blown dead. Did they get it off in time? Or was timeout called? I think we might have a flag. I don't see it. I don't see it. Ryan Manali's over there arguing his case. Well, might have been right. a delay of game. I think that's what we had I thought right it was there. A, I thought it was a delay of game, but I just never did see the flag thrown. That does move it back five yards. Delay of game. Clock has stopped. 8.58 to play. And this... 103rd meeting in the centennial year. First game in 1922. Here we are 100 years later. Rumor has it Ron Bricotta covered that game, but he corrected me. Deep throw and uh, a little bump and did he grab it? No. And a flag. I thought there might have been a little bump by the Tigers on that one on some close coverage. Let's see if it is defensive pass interference. If it is, looks like the coverage might have been on Dylan and the flag on Dylan Hazelwood. Yep, there it is. He got a little too handsy down there with uh, two people on top of Larson right there. So the little hands on the side, maybe grab a little bit of jersey, and that flag's going to come out official right on top of it, and I believe that might have been Dylan Hazelwood, as you said. Let's see, it's Dylan Hazelwood. Also, Reese Gordon grabbed his upper sleeve jersey to try to... Uh, hold him back there and not catch that ball. So that's going to get called every time. You know, the one thing that I think Jesuit is doing differently that's working very well for them, Wade, in this second half is they're starting to utilize the speed of Jace Larson out there. They're putting people on him and, and just throwing it to him and let him, letting him, allowing him to just use his ability to go out and get the football. Boy, he demands attention. 
I mean, I, I've Short been, run for been saying it all yard. night. He's he's the vertical threat that Jesuit needs. He's also got a great set of hands, runs great routes, and he's also very headsy as a wide receiver. So he's going to demand attention from your secondary, right? So with a guy that demands that type of attention, it opens other things up in your offense. That was Harry Reinhardt on that last carry. Second down, nine. Hand off to Parker for a few. And it'll be third and long. And here's where the Blue Jays are dangerous because of the speed of, of Larson here. That you've got to respect. Well, great job right there by Holy Cross defensive lineman Jeffrey Horner. Gets out of his nose position, throws the center just off to the side, comes off the block and makes a nice tackle. Horner, sophomore. They got a lot of sophomores playing on this Holy Cross defense. Two young teams here. And Perez caught from behind as he tried to scramble out at the 40. And boy, that was a huge tackle by the Tigers, Jordan Johnson, who is back in the game now. You think they didn't miss him when he had gotten shaken up and had to come off favoring that ankle? He's back in there. And how important is that? Well, look, I love the play, right? Watch him come off of his. Uh, the Jesuit left edge there. Chases him down, pulls him down right there, beats the tackle with a speed rush off the edge, then he gets up and starts limping. Yeah. Don't don't limp. You just made a well, great play, buddy. Don't limp. You know, we're saying <laughs> he got some help from Lance Williams also on that play. Fourth down and ten. We haven't had a lot of chance to talk about this young man right here, William Hudlow. He's had about eight down inside the five. This one, however, nobody there. It took the bounce inside the five, 39-yard punt, but there was nobody there to down it, so it rolled into the end zone. Well, that was a huge stop by Holy Cross. They get the ball now with 647. They need to run some clock and get some first downs. Tonight's coverage on Crescent City Sports is brought to you by Superior Benefit Solutions, who takes great pride in bringing star service to our community, whether it be attracting employees, retaining quality employees, competitive benefits package, or cost savings. They are here to provide solutions. No business is too large or too small. Contact Justin Manali at 504-307-8905 or visit superiorbenefitsolutions.com. Justin Manali. Justin Manelli. I was reading. Little inside and zone play right there, Ken. Little inside you. zone handoff right to, to Karen Smith. And the play was brought down to by Patrick Rao, senior defensive lineman from Jesuit. Canatella in. Canatella. A little bit of a – he's got to get rid of that ball because I've got to feel like he, he cannot – the coaches have told him, do not take a hit. Get rid of that football. Well, everything collapsed, right? Pressure. Forced him out of the pocket. He does a nice job finding a receiver, just overthrowing and throwing away. You know, that's that's a little of the experience that Canatella brings, obviously, to the quarterback position that Kobe Young does not bring. If you're joining us late, starting quarterback, a Canatella, Co Canatella for the Holy Cross Tigers wasn't in there just now. They took it. They got a little double reverse by Young, and flags are thrown as Kieran Smith picks up the first down before being run out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. But let's see if this one's coming back. Yes, it is coming back. You're gonna have a block in the back or a hold out here on the edge as it was developing. And I said, I said Kieran Smith, and that was Finn Martin. There's the holding call. That's going to come back. That's going to be 10, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Let's see if we can see the hold down here at the bottom of the screen. There's the reverse. Missed tackle in the backfield by number nine, Tyler Otan. Let's see if we, oh, right there. My goodness, that might have just been a block in the back. That looked like that might have been, couldn't quite get the number. Maybe it was 88 Sawyer Vaughn. I saw an 80 number as it flashed by on the screen. Well, it backs the Tigers up and makes it third down and long, third down and 13. They'll keep it and uh, try to let Fenn Martin do something again with it, but that brings up fourth down. And with five and a half, 
and the clock ticking to play in this game, and Holy Cross trailing by four. They have to punt it away unless Salta Fimaggio has something up his sleeve that no one would be expecting this deep in his own territory. You've got to bring in Colin Markey. He's had one block. Here comes the rush again. And the left-footed punter gets it off. This is a good one. Spins it way back. Chase Larson pulls it in at the 30. Yeah, Chase Larson Before does a great job in the return game, too. 45-yard punt when they needed it the most in the four-yard return. Let's take a break. We'll be back with your comments. Wait in just a moment. All right, we're back. 4.56 to play in this game. 16-12, Jesuit with the ball and the lead. Wade, you'll get your comments right after this play because the Blue Jays are facing first down. Tigers needed a good punt, and they got one. 45 yards that time from Colin Markey. Blue Jays will keep it on the ground right now. They've got the lead. They'd like to eat clock. Your comments were. Well, all I was going to say was Jace Larson again. I was tooting his horn because not only can he catch the ball as a receiver, he does a nice job in the punt return game. Look, it's not easy to catch a punt, right? And he's out there catching those things. He's been doing it for three years. Different running back in right there for the Jays. I believe that was Patrick Berrigan. Patrick got a little action on the last series. It looked like he maybe had um, not limped off, just come off after getting in one of those tackle piles. Bo Perez on the keep. Good spin out by Perez. Not much after that. Brings up about five to go on third down coming up for the Blue Jays. So important for Jesuit right now with four minutes to go. Keep the drive alive. If Jesuit can pull off one of these four or five minute drives, then they can eat up the clock and take the victory home. Holy Cross needs to start thinking about timeouts here. They got three on the board, right? Yes. They got to think about using it, making sure that they have enough time for one last drive. Now, what they've got to do first, though, is make sure that they do not give up the first down here on third down and five. Perez wants to throw. He's got some time. Here comes pressure. Perez escapes it. He's got room to run on the left side. Hit, breaks a tackle, goes down at midfield at the 50. Might be a first down. <laughs> that forward tackle. That wow. forward tackle right there by Jordan Johnson might have pushed him over the mark. But what nice footwork by Bo Perez evading the rush right here. Pressure applied by number 37, Trent Santos, it looked like right there, coming from his linebacker position, scatters Perez out of there. That should have been marked a little bit backwards, right? It should have been where his knee went down right there. And it is. I think it's going to bring up... It's going to bring up fourth and one. Fourth and one, yeah. And it was a hey, great, great spot by the officials. Boy, these officials have been sharp. They really have been sharp tonight. Everyone stacked in tight. Trying to draw them off sides. And I think we had a timeout. I think after Ryan Manali called the timeout, and he's discussing something with the official. With the, well, I think it was I think it was dinner arrangements for tonight. <laughs> but, but 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 in reality, what he was doing, he was trying to see what formation Holy Cross was going to line up against his offensive formation that he put out there. That he tried to draw them off sides. Didn't want to take the delay again game penalty, so he went ahead and called timeout. And then he discussed dinner uh, arrangements with the line judge. Take a look at that Holy Cross Jesuit uh, winning streaks, right? Now, uh, again, if groups take, of five. Group, groups of five. There have been six okay. different groups of five. If Jesuit holds on and wins this game, this would be uh, the seventh group of five winning streak. It would go from 2018 to now, but 56 to 60, Jesuit, Holy Cross 65 to 69, Holy Cross 82 to 86, Jesuit 90 to 94, Jesuit 2008 to 2012. That was, I believe I was involved in that. That was that me. You were involved in. And then Jesuit maybe 2018 to here, unless Holy Cross can make this defensive play the biggest play of the game. 
because this is it. First down here with 2.38 to go, and just with, even with three timeouts or two timeouts left for Holy Cross, can probably run it out. Trying to draw him offside again. Patrick Berrigan is number 22, the running back on the side of Bo Perez. Five seconds to get the snap off. Taking him time. Unless he called the timeout. They had to call a timeout because the play clock was running down. Took the delay of game penalty and they're going to punt the football. That's what it is. They took the delay of game and they'll just go ahead and punt the football. And Judgment will trust their defense against the Holy Cross Tiger offense, which for the most part has been an all-running game offense tonight. Well, that's re that, that's interesting, right? Uh, you know, they if they got that first down there, talking about Jesuit, they could have iced the thing, you know, probably. Even though Holy Cross had three timeouts, they go ahead and decide to take the lay a game of penalty and punt it and rely on their defense. William Hudlow takes two steps to the right before he punts that football. Let's coverage get down there and does a great job laying it inside the 25-yard line where it's down at the 24-33-yard punt by Hudlow, who, as we said earlier, is a two-lane commit. And on straightaway punts, averages about right at about 43.5. And on those step side step kicks, those rugby style kicks, he's right there down at about the high 30s. And very impressive. Eighth grader, soccer player, wanted to be a punter and do nothing but punt. And that's all he's done. So here we go with Kobe Young at quarterback. Uh, takes it himself. And he'll come to the near side for just a few. Jake Roberts comes up and sets the edge from his corner position to force, uh, Bo, um, excuse me, to force um, Kobe Young. Kobe Young back inside. Nice job right there. Thing for Kobe Young is if he could have gotten out of bounds, that would have helped. But he correct. Couldn't. He's got to be. A, he's got to be aware of situational football here. That's it. Kobe Young being chased from behind. He gets to the outside steps, and now he does get out of bounds right at the first down marker. Hard to see if he stepped enough to get it. They will move the chains, Wade Kaiser says. Well, they're going to move the chains. They covered. That was the pass that he hit earlier in the game. Finn Martin for the touchdown. They covered at that time. Jesuit didn't bite on it, right? He was looking downfield trying to throw the ball. Nothing open. He sprints. Good situational football. Oh, he did not get the first down. He went out of bounds. Yeah, he did. And he's going to be a yard short. Hard to tell with that crowd of players around where he stepped up. So here we go with Finn Martin, the little speedster on the right side. They'll deal with Keyron Smith. He'll try it, push forward. It's going to be close, and I don't know if he made it or not. If not, it's four-down territory, so oh, no doubt. is going to have to go for it. There's Tyler gonna, Otan yeah. stacks them up that time. Four-down territory. Time They're going to take call. a timeout and talk about it. You're right. They, they've got to go for this here. They have no choice. You know, when I saw Finn Martin trot in from the sidelines, number 11, he didn't touch that ball. That was the give to Kieran Smith. But you're thinking that, again, Holy Cross might have been setting up that play from Kobe Young to Finn Martin. That resulted in that 61-yard touchdown in the first half going in the opposite direction. Remember, Holy Cross, even if they had a kicking game, wouldn't help them here. They've got to score a touchdown here. They're down by four. Well, they're four down territory. They have, you know, no other choice. They're going to have to get the sticks right here. This is it. You either make the first or we've got another five-game streak this one held by the Jesuit Blue Jays. Remember a conversation once between Bill Clements, the Holy Cross defensive coordinator, and Wayne Forsang in the middle of a Holy Cross five-game streak, and he said, Coach, we just couldn't beat you those years. And he said, film study. You'll love this. And he said, what do you mean? He says, watch that single wing. I'll finish it in a minute because this is the game right here. And a big hole and a second effort push by Kobe Young. You know, you, you, you first down, Tigers. You go with who brung you, right? And tonight, yep. number two has brought Holy Cross. So you're going to put the ball in the best player's hands on your team, and he gets the first down. We've got a Jesuit defensive lineman down right here. Number 78, it looks like, if I'm not mistaken, that is David Mejia. Senior defensive lineman, 6'1", 255 pounds. Hopefully he's okay. They're playing 
Oh, I know that pose. <laughs> okay. Cramp. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Everybody out there can probably figure this one out. So they're just helping them out there to finish that, that story. So Bill Clement said, right. film study, buddy. He says, we watched that Ken Tarzetti single wing, and you line up heavy to one side of the line, but also heavy in that single wing backfield to one side of the backfield. And everybody with defense, Jesuit, where they were heavy on the line, but we noticed with a lot of film study that almost 99% of the time you always ran, just what always ran to the heavy side of the backfield in that era back then in those years. And he said all that shifting Holy Cross defensively would do right before the line, boom, we were just setting up for that and we were able to make some real good stops. Work well, didn't work all the time, but it worked sometimes. Oh, there you go, film You're study. You're a film study guy. Film study guy. Spent hours and hours and hours and hours doing it. Bill Clements, one of the great defensive coordinators at Holy Cross on the John Callbacker staff. Tigers have new life. Kieran Smith hits, takes the hit, pushes further, didn't get out of bounds. That hurts the Tigers. Nick Clock Jacobs got to make that tackle. He comes up and really lays a lick on Kieran Smith from his corner position and just doesn't wrap up, right? And Kieran Smith keeps running. First down, stops the clock for a little while, but now it's running. 122, 121, clock's running. Tigers trying to get the ball into the hands of Kobe Young, who trips in the backfield and goes down. And the Holy Cross, with two timeouts, may have to take one here. They got to take one. They do. Timeout Holy Cross to stop the clock with one minute and ten seconds to go. Don't leave your screen. You can't have a loss. You can't have a sack, right? Negative yardage is is completely non-acceptable. So you've got to be running north and south as quickly as possible. Absolutely. I mean that, 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 that's just the way it is. They well, can't take the a sack and they can't they can't take a, a loss behind the line of scrimmage. You got a minute ten seconds left. It's second down. You took the loss behind the line of scrimmage. He tripped. You don't want to, but he tripped. So now it's second down and thirteen. When do you finally have to go to the air? I'm not sure if Holy Cross can get this done on the ground. Well, we also You're do, probably going to have to go to the air. Right. Well, we, we we've seen Canatella already tonight, but we really don't know. You know, could he be hurting? Could he not be able to throw the ball? Could he have taken a bump on it the last series he was in? We just don't know these Remember things, this. right? We, so we know he had a shoulder injury, and we know he didn't throw it long in the few series that he did come in here in the second half. So here we go with second down. And Young wants to throw it. He'll tuck it under, run up the middle, breaks a tackle. He's across the 50 and down to the Jesuit 45-yard line. Very close to a first down, but the clock is ticking. 59 seconds. Holy Cross get has on the one ball. timeout remaining. They've got to get on the ball. They've got to get on the ball. They've got to spike the ball. They've got to stop it. Too much time ticking off the clock. 50. Remember, you've got to spike it under center. You can't spike it from the gun. That's it. You can't spike it from the gun. They're going to go again and... Uh, now they're going to probably take the time out with 40 seconds to play in this game. Jesuit. Clock stops to move the chains. At the Jesuit 41. The call should be in. It's Kobe Young, Kieran Smith in the backfield. And there's, uh oh, oh, wait a Can't minute. Can't do He's, that. Cannot spike cannot it do out that. of the gun. Cannot do that. That's, That's a flag. You cannot spike from the gun. You've got to spike from underneath center. That's it. That's illegal forward That's pass. illegal forward pass. Grounding, illegal forward pass, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be loss of down, right? No, no. No, 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 no loss should of down. It should not be a loss of down. No loss of down. Well, maybe they're saying, maybe they're saying that, yeah. It's an, they treated it as an incomplete pass. He's going to throw it long. Finn Martin tied up, looking for a flag, and he'll get two of them. So that's going to give the Tigers new life with 31 seconds to play, and the clock stopped again. All right, let's go back to the uh, clocking of the ball after our interference penalty call by Jesuit. All right, they called it because he threw the ball at the foot of the receiver, which was the running back, yes. and they called it an incomplete pass. Boom, brings up second down. They throw the ball deep right there. We get Nick Jacobs on the interference penalty. Take a look at it. Yeah. Right there. Ties Runs right Finn in Martin. him, ties him up, Finn Martin, and there's the flag. Good ex explanation. But, guys out there, you really can't clock the ball from a shotgun position. Got to be on the center in order to do it. Timeout Jesuit. 
So, so the we, Blue Jays have one timeout. Holy Cross also has one timeout remaining. 31 seconds. Both of these teams playing for the pride of the rivalry. The Golden Football Trophy, which we will watch at the end of this game, presented to the winner. The Blue Jays tried to extend what would be only the seventh five-game streak. There's your Division I select this power rating. This is right. what they're really playing for. And there's entering week nine. You can see again, we talked about this earlier, Holy Cross is number 20, Jesuits number 22. They're going to take the top 24 advancing into the playoffs, right? So a win could, in this game, one of the teams could probably secure possibly one of those top 24 positions. A loss would probably put you out. Young in trouble. Young scrambling. Young's got a little bit of daylight. Young in space is dangerous inside the 20, and he runs out of bounds, stopping the clock with 20 seconds. Oh, my goodness. What an athlete. What an athlete. If anybody my out there goodness. watching tonight or listening tonight or watching our television replay this week, they're gonna, you've got to be enjoying this young man, Kobe Young, because I wow. certainly am. <laughs> what an athlete. My goodness. Here we go. 20 seconds left. What a ball game. Chris Serkovich comes in at one of the wide receiver spots. Second down and short. Young in trouble. Young uh, brought down at the 20. Nowhere to go. Got caught up in a lot of people, and Holy Cross has to call timeout. They allowed just six seconds to tick off the clock on that play. 14 seconds remain in this game. Well, you know, this, this, this isn't exactly what Kobe Young can do. He can throw the ball down the field. We know that. But he can't read the routes. He can't read the coverages. You know, he hasn't played enough quarterback to do that. It looks like, look who's standing right there in the huddle, kind of stretching his shoulder out and rotating his arm around. Might be going in. Well, what that would give Holy Cross, was, if Cole Canatella can get into the game, he can't throw it long, but with that shoulder injury, he can throw it short, and that would put your playmaker, Kobe Young, in space. If you can get him in the crease, they tried this earlier, but Kobe Young was double teamed, and he couldn't get free. That was earlier. All right, so you got 14 seconds. You have no timeouts, right? And it is, uh, what is that, second down, third down. All right. Oh, it's he fourth down. In. I'm sorry. It's fourth down. Nope. Yeah, is it is Canatella? Right. So, yeah. so here comes Canatella. All right. You don't have much choice in what you have to do here with the football now. Canatella is coming in. Third down. That puts Kobe Young in the slot. At the bottom of your screen, he's in the slot. Also, Canatella gives you a little experience at game management at quarterback. Timeout, Jesuit. They, they take their last timeout, so no timeouts remaining for either team in the final 14 seconds. Well, they wanted to get a look and see what Holy Cross was coming out in. More importantly, they wanted to see who was coming out at quarterback, correct? Mm -hmm. So That's now it. they can adjust their defense and make, make any adjustments they have to. So with 12 seconds left on the clock, 14 seconds left on the clock, I'm sorry, you could take one shot at that first down marker. Right, get a little bit closer so you can take a little bit better shot at that end zone. We got to remember he's throwing with a hurt shoulder, so he might not have the zip he needs. He, he to may get not the ball be able to get the ball into the end zone. The but end I zone. think the play and the the thing that Salt was hoping for in this game more than anything was if I could get somebody who can get the ball to my playmaker with a little bit of space. You get it to him inside the ten, and you hope he can turn it around and get it into the end zone. But again. You've got clock management, it's got to be on which the boundary. is not important here on third down because there's no spike in the ball here. You've got to get it in. If, if you're not going into the end zone, you've got to go to the boundary. Right. If this don't work, you can't spike it on fourth. So here we go. Remember, it's third down and four. So the Tigers, with 14 seconds, can pick up a first down. If they could get out of bounds, that would stop the clock. There's number two. Young in the slot. In the, at the slot. Bottom of Colby your Young in the slot, yes. Canatella will scramble to the right. Canatella will throw, and he throws it away. Seven seconds remaining. Fourth down coming up for the Tigers. They're uh, bracketing Kobe Young. They're up top on him, and they're underneath. They're running a linebacker on the underneath hip, and they have the safety on top. 
So that might force Brady Landro, one of the offensive linemen, Holy got up slow. He is okay. That might force Holy Cross to look in another direction, possibly at another receiver, maybe Finn well, Martin. Finn Martin would be your number two guy to go to. He has been the big playmaker when Kobe Young has been at quarterback. And Finn Martin, number 11, will go to the top of your screen. Kobe Young will stay in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Derek Johnson is number 15, all the way down to the bottom of your screen. This is fourth down with six seconds to go. The quick throw into the end zone. It is intercepted by the Blue Jays. Jesuit will win this game and extend this win streak, the seventh now in the series, to five games. This one is over on the final play of the game as Cole Canatella with the separated, not separated, but injured shoulder, hurt shoulder, didn't have the zip on that ball. He tried to get it into the end zone, but he couldn't reach the intended receiver. And it's picked off by Richard Bell, number 31, sophomore defensive back in there playing in a nickel position, comes up with the underthrown ball for the interception of his lifetime and Jesuit. Big win for the Jesuit Blue Jays. Tough loss for the Holy Cross Tigers. We'll take a break. The final score in this one is Jesuit 16, Holy Cross 12. It really was. When they start what? When they start everything. Okay, that's fine. Hey, Mark, if we're on the air and you guys are pulling out, it is a pleasure to meet you. Very nice listening to you. Hey, give me, you. Write, your, write your number down here, because if we do any more games than your son's quarterback, and I want to be able to coach. Stand by. Let's go. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, and the 103rd meeting on the centennial anniversary of the first game 100 years ago in 1922 will belong to the Jesuit Blue Jays, who defeat the Holy Cross Tigers 16 to 12. And Wade Kaiser, this was a good football game. Great football game. Yeah, I told you it was going to be a heavyweight fight right till the end, right? Both teams came out punching. They stayed punching, right? <laughs> it was physical. It was bloody. And... Uh, you know, that, that's that's two teams fighting for their lives to get a win, and both teams played hard, so kudos to both teams to come out there and continue the fight to get that W that they needed so hard to continue their season and hopefully move one of them into the playoffs. There's a good look right there at the Golden Football. The Golden Football, but a better look at players congratulating each other, hugging each other from both teams. You know, back in when when you played, and, and even back when I was at Holy Cross in the 1960s, you didn't you didn't have the the camaraderie with other players from other schools as much as you do now. Now with playgrounds and kids moving around, they know each other when they when they go to school. And look, man, you may play for the other team, but there's still a lot of camaraderie and good sportsmanship, and that's what's so enlightening to see. Well, these kids played on the playground with each other. A lot of them went to the same elementary schools. They've grown up in some of the same neighborhoods. You know, you drive through these neighborhoods in Metairie and in uptown New Orleans and out in Lakeview and, and in Chalmette and, and, and in Gentilly, and they've got this one yard has a sign from Jesuit in it. One yard has a sign from Holy Cross in it. One yard has a sign from Brother Martin in it. One yard has a sign from St. Aug in it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They know each other, and they all respect each other. Other, and it's great competition amongst each other. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And they play not only for the rivalry, but for that golden football trophy that you see right there. You know, from up here, it just looks a lot 
older, the trophy. It really wasn't around in, 19, uh, in 1922. It wasn't? It wasn't? <laughs> Well, the, tonight's outstanding football player and MVP, I think they've just announced it, is Kobe Young from Holy Cross. From Holy Cross. Well, I, I, very well deserved. Very well deserved. Very special. Each team gets a, a, an outstanding player. So let's see who the outstanding player for Jesuit is going to be. And the most outstanding player from I'm going to guess. No, I won't. Let's wait. <laughs> 10 carries for 38 yards and one touchdown. He's 12 for 18 for 163 yards and a passing touchdown. Bo Perez. Number 16. Bo Perez. Bo Perez, quarterback Bo Perez. You know, very, the, very the well deserved picture. also. I, I would have either given it to Joe, uh, Bo Perez or Chase Larson, he, one of the two. Either could have gotten it. Both played very well and deserved it. And it's good to see this young quarterback again. A lot on his shoulders this year. Remember, he had to play, replace Jack LaRivier. And now the Golden Football Trophy being awarded. They will hold it until next year's game. Dave Morrow, Jesuit Athletics Director, will accept the Golden Football Award. And as we said before in this series, there have been six different five-game win streaks. Tonight, Jesuit just made it the seventh different five-game win streak. East School's alma mater will be played. Let's go down and listen to the alma mater of both schools. This is the Holy Cross alma mater. That was the Holy Cross alma mater, and now we hear the uh, Jesuit Blue Jay alma mater played by the Jesuit High School Marching Band.
As we wrap it up, Wade Kaiser, the great Billy Truax once told me, played at Holy Cross, LSU, Los Angeles Rams, and Dallas Cowboys, got a Super Bowl ring here in New Orleans with the Dallas Cowboys, and he said, I still get goosebumps when I hear my, the alma maters of my schools. Well, that's and, the way it uh, should be, and that's, that's the great traditions of these two outstanding institutions. That alma mater kind of says it all. Hey, when everybody's up there singing it in the stands and the players are singing it with the fans in the stands. Before you get your final comments, Holy Cross with the loss now 2 and 7 final score in this one just with 16, Holy Cross 12. Holy Cross falls to 2 and 7, 0 oh and 6 in District 95A. And next week they have East St. John, the Jesuit Blue Jays up their record to 3 and 6, 1 and 5 in District 95A. They have Rummel next week. Before we close it out, your final comments, Wade Kaiser. Great football, great pageantry, great game. Two great institutions on a beautiful evening right here at Tad Gormley Stadium in the city of New Orleans. You can't ask for any better than prep football in this great city. Well, I've enjoyed it. Glad you did, too. want to thank Lenny Van Gilder and, and the entire crew here. Thanks for joining us this evening. Crescent City Sports has more high school football coverage for you on the final week of the regular season. Visit CrescentCitySports.com and see the schedule updates. For Wade Kaiser and our entire Crescent City Sports team, I'm Ken Berthelot. Once again, the final score in the 103rd meeting of the 100th year anniversary of the first meeting is Jesuit. Winning it over Holy Cross 16 to 12 from Tad Garbley City Park Stadium in New Orleans. Good night, everybody.